Wonderful, Eric. I was wondering if you will come. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I'm not co-host, shit. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't miss it. All right. All right. Y'all set? Michael, I am, right? right? Sorry? Yeah, I see I'm host, so that's great. Do, we don't have a waiting room this time? No, because this is the uh, final presentation, so everyone, everyone sees them. Uh, okay. Well, let's wait. Uh, one thing you want to do is um, one thing you want to do is uh, in the participants tab you can mute everybody. You can what? You can mute everyone and prevent anyone from unmuting themselves. Oh. Mute all, yeah, I can see it. And then make sure it's um, the box to allow people to unmute themselves is like- I, I remove it. Yeah, yeah, remove it, yeah. Yeah, great. And that way you can prevent any accidental unmuting. Um, but other than that should be said, it looks like it's recording. Yep. So now I'm just sending it to the judge channel, right? So, as well. yeah they should have it they should um they should have a calendar invite with the link but you can send the link mm -hmm. to the panel as well okay you know who are the judges i mean yeah, it doesn't matter it was, right? it was uh it was sent to us um there's a specific slack channel um yeah, yeah, yeah. back to judges okay. Okay, send it again here. No, I'm quickly checking. And you have the deck, right? Um, for the yeah. final presentations. Yeah, so Vaishali and Arshana, they, they helped me. Yeah. For that, that was great. Uh, let me see. Do you see Varshali and Arsenal already here? Um, I don't know. They might still be putting it together. Yeah, maybe. Oh. Did you uh, end up getting mentors on the on the practice pitches? Uh, last minute, one guy joined. Yeah. But nice. uh, just one, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were safe. <laughs> All right, I hope it's working. I was wondering, do you see the you know, the faces here actually when I share my screen? Like here, Eric. All right, doesn't matter. All right. Okay, track J, fine presentation.
just for everyone, we're just waiting a few more minutes to make sure that everything is set up. We will start officially in a few minutes. Hey, uh, yeah, sorry, I had to mute myself, but I couldn't unmute. <laughs> Michael, uh, are you all set? Yeah, I'm just waiting if Arshana are here, then see her. Okay, once they enter, you should be able to make them, uh, make them co-hosts. Yeah, yeah, I don't see them right now. Okay, they're not here yet. Let's wait a little bit until they're here. Once they uh, once they sign on, I'll, I'll sign off. Yep, that's not a problem. It's fine. So who are the, I mean, I know I can have access to it, but the judges is here. Um, should be Dr. Arvind Mathur. Oh, here we go. Let me put in co-host. Avi Soin. Okay. Um, you want to make, yes. Dr. Avi Soin is in the, um, is in the audience. So you'll want to make him a co-host. Yeah, I made him co-host. Damodar Batani. Also, also um, in the room, so I want to make them a co-host. Our Avin so Avi, Dr. Avi so is also a mentor, right? A judge. A uh, judge, yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, I'm actually, I can just put that slide. Here we go. And Damodar Bachani is in. I think the only person we're missing is Dinesh Vaya. Yeah. yeah. So we're missing one mentor, and I don't see Arsenal and Vaishali already, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, just send them a message. Hope they're coming.
judges, um, I posted the score sheet in the judges track G channel. I think Marsha and Asana are still pasting slides. Um, Eric, do you think we should just start with the first team? Or how do you think we should do that? I would check with one of them to see how they're doing. Because um, I don't want to run into, uh, run into the unfinished part. So you said we should wait? Guys, where can I find my score? Where can I find the score sheet? I just posted it in the judges track G channel. It's a Slack channel with all of the judges in it. Yeah, like I would give it a few more minutes um, and try to see how uh, Archer and Vaishali are doing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's wait a little bit. So hopefully everyone, if you want to take a five minutes break, take a five minutes break. Um, we will start around 45, hopefully. Where can I find the Slack channel? Is it a link on my email? We are you on Slack, sir? No, I'm not. Are you not on okay. Slack? Okay. Have you had a chance to join Slack? No. Okay, because that's where we communicate. This is where we all ex where we exchange information. So can, I, can I join it through? The, can, is there a link I can go on it through my browser? I I don't know exactly who is responsible to send you the link. Eric, do you know the answer? Yeah, it'd be Freddie. I think at this point it's probably uh, pretty complicated to get onto Slack. Um, Dr. Avi, I will I will message you privately um, the judge form in the chat for for the Zoom meeting. Let me know if you got it. I got it. So I just open it. Uh, yeah, just open it. Uh, you'll use that to uh, to judge um, each of the teams uh, when you're like when. Um, you finish judging one of the teams, just press submit, and then you know you you'll have an option to resubmit another form. Uh, so click that to get to the next team. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and then you do have the Zoom invite for the judge deliberation room, right? Uh, that's a separate Zoom invite, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so those, I guess I, uh, that's the one that Samuel Matthew would have sent. Um, or whoever, doesn't matter. Actually, you know um, what? Let me make sure you guys are all added to that judge deliberation room. Um, but yeah, I'll add you guys to that invite. Um, but those are the important things to have for now. Right. So I, I see that uh, there were some problems with um, the submission. Apparently, people submitted many times uh, or things like that. And I think that's why they had a hard time to compile all the, all the, the PowerPoints. I hope they will come. But it should be, should be good very soon. Hmm. OK. And Eric, should we, uh, for the judge deliberation, because they're all not on Slack, should we, do you think you can create a WhatsApp group or how should we do that? Or maybe for email? Oh yeah, so the, you mean um, inviting the judges to the deliberation, right? Yeah, after, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna add them because there's an email invite uh, to the Zoom, uh, to the Zoom meeting. I'm gonna add all of the judges to that email invite. 
Perfect. Let's do that. Yeah. So I got the judge deliberation panel invite. Yes, and I just sent it to all of the judges as well. Judges, let me know if any of you didn't receive that invite via email. Cool. So at this point in time, we are just the judges and the mentors, I guess. Yeah. And the organizers. Eric, do you see Arsena um, and Vaishali? Yeah, I see them. Let me respond.
Right, we are about to start. I think we are really finalizing the last little things to organize and then we're good. Okay, so now uh, in theory we have our two um, track support that are here with us as co-hosts, Varshali and Arshana. Are you here? Yeah, we are here. Mike, we are here. Wonderful. So Arshana, do you, uh, do you, uh, everything is fine with the presentation? Yeah, everything yeah. is fine. Uh, we were not able to add one of the team's PPT to the final uh, presentation. They had restricted their access. Oh, which team was that? It is Mass Calibrated. Uh, Mass, okay. So Mass Calibrated, can you send uh, your Google Slide? So you have to change the permission of your Google Slides. And worse can I say, yeah, so do that and send again the link to um, our Shana or no, Vashri. So please send it to Vaishali, Vaishali uh, per private message on Slack and change your permission. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So Arshana, are you ready to be the timer again? Yes, Mike, we are, I'm ready. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So I guess we are ready to launch our final presentation pitches with amazing Dutch judges. First, um, I mean, what an event, what, uh, what a collaboration event where people really have to quickly uh, implement ideas. People are from all around the world with different backgrounds and, and that's the beauty of it. So I'm really, really happy that we made this event happen. Uh, so many people, experts, buzz individuals are taking time this weekend to innovate. So thank you all for being here. And I'm super excited to listen to all the pitches. Now, I would like to introduce um, Dr. Arvin Matur, or Dr. Avi Soin, Dr. Damodar Bashani, and Dr. Dinesh Vyas. We are so lucky to have them. Dr. Arvin Matur, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, I am a professor of medicine and retired principal of medical college in Jodhpur, India, and presently director of Asian Center for Medical Education, Research, and Innovations and also associated with Jodhpur School of Public Health. My interest is in HIV care and geriatrics. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introduction. Dr. Avi Soin, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Avi Soin. I'm the chairman of the Institute of Liver Transplantation and Regenerative Medicine at Medanta Hospital in Gurugram in India. I'm also the lead investigator nationally for the Indian multicentric RCT on the use of tocilizumab in COVID-19. Uh, I'm an investor and scientific advisor in health tech companies and four of them, uh, one in Israel, one in India and two in the US. Uh, great to be here. Wow, we are so lucky to have you all. And thank you so much for being with us. Dr. Damodar, would you like to introduce yourself? I am um, Dr. Damoda Bachani. I retired as director and professor of community medicine in Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi, and also had another hat of being deputy commissioner in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Currently, I am deputy director for USAID project Building Healthy Cities in four countries. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Dr. Dinesh, your turn. Oh, he's not here, right? Do, do we have Dr. Dinesh in the audience now? Um, 
Let's yes, you'll need to make him a co-host. Yes. Yeah, we have the niche. Yeah, we have to make him a co-host. Um, you can search for his name in the in the participants. Oh, list. true, true. Right. Dr. Dinesh, do you hear us? You are able to unmute yourself. Yes, absolutely. Thank you and good morning, good evening. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Vyas. I'm uh, chair of uh, surgery department in med school in California. Also CMO of uh, quality of uh, one of the hospitals, Adventist Hospital. Uh, in addition, uh, running a big uh, pre-hospital education program in India for policemen and nurses for last 15 years. Uh, happy to join. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have really, really, really um, quality judges today. I'm super excited to start. And I would like to start right away because I know we will be short on time. So let's jump into the next slide. It's a little bit slow, I apologize. All right, team J015 Phonics. And every time you see these slides, you know who is coming after them. So in that case, plus COVID, please be ready. Whenever you're ready, um, Team J015, please raise your hand. And once we raise your hand, we can't unmute you. At least the speaker, yes. And for the feedback session, if someone wants to jump in to comment, like a team member, please raise your hand as well. Thank you very much. So Ankshit, whenever you're ready, feel free to start and please pin on, please uh, pin our timer, Arshana. Do you know how to team her, uh, to pin her? Uh, can I start? Yes, do you know how to pin, do you see Arshana right now? Uh, no. Okay, do you know how to see her? Do you know how you can have her video? I cannot see her. Yes, I saw her. Okay, wonderful. So she would, yeah. yes, she, she will put a red background when you over time. So please make sure that when you see this red background, you have to wrap up very quickly, all right? Okay, okay. Wonderful. Whenever you're ready, please feel free to start. Hi, everyone. Corona being a global pandemic has adversely affected the economy and tested our healthcare system's capability. It has given a tough time to all the healthcare professionals working around the clock, which has taken a toll on their physical and mental health. Even after tremendous efforts, this virus has been growing exponentially. All of this has led to extreme danger of doctors Ensuring their safety and well-being means that while they sacrifice themselves, we should look after their safety and well-being or we can say mental health. Next, some problems faced by them are stress, mental issues, social stigma and safety issues. Here you can see people are pelting rocks at them. Improper resource allocation is also there due to all. Ankit? Ankit, do you hear yours? Okay. All right. So unfortunately, Ankit has having internet connection problem. Dr. Ananta, I see you are in the team and you raise your hand. Would you like to continue the, the talk? Okay, let's unmute you. Or, oh, Ankit is here again. Ankit, you're here? Yes, yes, I am here. So where did I left off? Here, like maybe 10 seconds after you started the, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm really sorry. Some problems faced by them are stress, mental health issues, social stigma, and safety issues. Here you can see people are pelting rocks at them. 
improper resource allocation is also there due to all this and extreme work hours they can give wrong diagnosis which is fatal they can be infected or boycotted from society there is uncomfortable clothing in which voice is not clear and often misinterpreted the high chances of virus spread are also there next the solutions we have proposed has two segments hardware and software next in the solution proposed by hardware simple non contact physical checks will be provided such as checking body temperature heart rate and respiratory rate and the patients will be classified by which the doctors will have a chance to be prepared providing mic and speaker inside ppe kit for hassle free communication and social distance check with the help of surveillance cameras next in the mobile or web based application staff can only log in if they have worn a mask ensuring their safety work hours will be calculated and break times will be provided based on the data questionnaires will be shared for keeping a check on their mental health real time collaboration between demand and supply for ensuring gears all of the patient's data will be stored in cloud uh, keeping in mind the telemedicine practice guidelines issued on 25th march 2020 and professional conduct etiquette and ethics regulation 2002 whenever possible they can consult doctors online and also doctors will be able to take help of other doctors this will not only prevent contact with reports and patients but also act as a workload distributor next real time data analyzation of corona cases predicting increase of workload in the coming days symptom checker which will provide a safety tag which will help reduce social stigma next regarding target india has a large population of 1305 million about 1046 million active mobile connections from which about 87.5 download uh, service apps which proves that we have a Okay, we have, we have lost Ankit again. All right, I hope he's coming back. Can you hello? Yeah. Hello. So, but you know what? Yeah, the time is over anyway. So let's. Um, I would love to have Ankit here for the feedbacks at least. Okay. So let's. Ankit, are you here? Okay, but I see that Dr. Yes, Ananta is here. Yes, here. Oh, you're here. So time is over anyway, so we have to go now to the okay. feedbacks. I would like um, to start with Arvin to give the first one. The feedbacks will be two minutes. I didn't precise that. The feedbacks will be two minutes. Arsana, if you can also uh, show us a red flag when we're over. I will suggest only have yes. two uh, mentors, uh, sorry, judges, uh, for each uh, presentation. So judges, if you are interested in answering the topic, could you please also raise your hand uh, so I know which uh, judge I can ask. And um, do you know how to raise your hand, uh, judges? No. So you, have to, so you have to go to the participants and from the participants, then you can see at the bottom, you should have a sign where you can raise the hand. Mike, sorry okay. to interrupt. Is it two minutes for each judge or, or a total? No, like two minutes, minutes, two minutes in total. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right. Have you have you seen the button for raising the hand? Judges? Some of them have hand. The co host cannot. All of them yeah, you, don't have it. Oh, you don't. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, so what I will say is just if anyone wants to jump in, any, yeah, judges, yeah, perfect. Yeah, raising the hand like this is perfect, actually. Dr. Avi? Yeah, Ankit, uh, you have given a broad overview of the problem, but what exactly you would like to uh, implement or innovate in all the scenario? Because you have given all the problems which are being faced and the all the generic answers which are already existing. So what is Sir, your uh, new innovation? Sir, actually we have provided a all-in-one solution which is currently not being done. Uh, it's very financially feasible 
you have to create a app and just a social screener at the door that uh, that's it and also in ppe kits many doctors face this issue where they cannot connect uh, communicate efficiently with their team members uh, and uh, are often misinterpreted so uh, we would like mic and speaker inside the ppe kits got it thank thank you very much let's jump to a second judge dr avi yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I agree with Arvind. Uh, a lot of things have been put together, and Antik, you're right. You have provided theoretically some solutions, but the implementation part, how will you carry that out? Will it be implemented at city level, hospital level, country level? Will there be a common app? Where will the data go? So where does it all tie in eventually? Sir, actually, we are targeting hospitals at first. We'll register doctors and uh, the patients as well. so doctors will have to uh, log in using uh, their ids and patients will have separate ids wherein they can connect with each other video conferencing or like upload their medical files so that no contact is there or least contact possible is there for example if what someone about, has uh, what about interoperability interoperability with the hospital systems hospital information systems or the emrs have you thought of that uh sorry sir i didn't quite get you can you repeat the I'm question i'm saying connectivity to existing hospital information systems that's one and two you yes. want the data to be fed into the hospital servers so obviously they have to, has to be uh, easy interoperability right yes sir uh, like uh, you must have used cam scanner or adobe scan nowadays so we'll be uploading like simple pdfs uh, file of that which will be accessible accessible by doctors whenever the patient uh has an appointment uh, point i ankit are you here yes i'm here perfect you can finish your sentence but then we we have to wrap up so i was saying that uh whenever a patient makes an appointment okay he lost the connection again um yeah so i would i would say let's jump to the next team unfortunately so we don't lose more time i think we have enough i think we have yeah, enough yeah perfect perfect wonderful thank you so much uh, for uh, the the pitch and now we are, it's time to have class covid coming up we have the team g18 chart tour we sorry for the pronunciation uh, so be ready to raise your hand afterwards and uh, if you are a part of the previous team please you can lower your hand as well vashali do you think you can unmute the people thank you so much hi should i start whenever you ready feel free to start but first do you see arshana for the timer i uh, know i don't Do you know how to see her? Can you can pin. You can you can pin her. Okay. So so basically you have to find her. Yep, I'll show you. I got her. Yeah, can you yeah. find me now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, and now you can pin her if you want. She will have a red flag behind her red red screen when it's over. So please be respectful of that. Okay. Thank you so much. When you're ready, you can start. Hey, this is uh, Team Fast COVID, and this is our innovative idea to use sterile concentrated neutralizing IgG or immunoglobulin G antibodies specific against SARS-CoV-19. Um, sorry, SARS-CoV-2 um, to, as a preventive monthly treatment for medical personnel. As we can next, please. As as we can tell the news, in the news, a lot of doctors are try, are dying due to COVID nineteen. So how can we make this medical personnel's immune system resistant to COVID nineteen during this pandemic? Next, please. The solution is to immunize the doctors with monthly doses of concentrated neutralizing IgG antibodies from recovered COVID nineteen patients. Next, please. 
First, we will run the clinical research trial to test for the safety and efficacy in the double-blind placebo-controlled case control study of concentrated neutralizing IgG antibody specific against SARS-CoV-2 from recovering COVID-19 patients, including asymptomatic patients. This study is different from prior studies in that neutralizing antibodies will be tested for and only, only plasma donations from positive individuals tested for neutralizing antibodies will be used. Thus, all the in plasma donations will contain neutralizing antibodies. This makes this clinical trial innovative since neutralizing antibodies are proven to be more effective against SARS-CoV-2 and then thus the final results of the clinical trial has a potential of showing more promising efficacy. CPAS technology can be used as a neutralizing antibody detection assay without the need of BSL-3 labs. While we await the results of the trial, we will build the foundation of a, an abundant plasma donation supply chain by creating a national plasma database registry call and calling center, which is different from existing products. We have machine learning technology matching plasma donors would be obtained and, and the calling center can then coordinate between plasma donors, donation centers, and medical personnel in a timely manner to reduce the need for cold chain supply. Next, please. Clinical trials will be funded by governments, charities, and promotional companies that will advertise their products upon promoting plasma donations. Donation centers will be outside the hospital settings with appointments to reduce fear of public getting reinfected in the process. Incentives such as rubber hearts and t-shirts will be sold online with logos of donating companies printed on them, promoting the plasma donation with proceeds going towards the cause. We also created a debunking myth uh, a, a blog, sorry, um, debunking the myths about plasma donation and motivating citizens um, to, you know, to, to, to promote the government and companies to support the plasma donations. Next, please. These are some mar marketing concepts that I had mentioned before. Next. Yeah, yeah, I just realized, um, unfortunately, you're already over time. I didn't see that. So we have to have a hard stop. Um, no, I would like to have any judges who would like to give us feedback. Yeah, Dr. Avi, I see you unmuted. You would like to talk? I could. Okay. Um, so, you know, you basically relying on passive immunization. That's what you're doing. Yes. And, and, and this concept has not been really tested in trials. And you said that you will be conducting trials. You see, the, there are two or three big issues here. One is that the proposal that you've given is actually not used for any disease anywhere in the world so far. Number two, the current trials and efficacy of uh, antibodies as a treatment for COVID you know, from, from donated plasma from convalescent sera is a question mark. There is no proven benefit right now. There is no country in the world that actually um, has approved this as standard treatment. It's all off, off label compassionate use. So there are these two issues. One, never been done before. Two, the current evidence points against. So what do you say? May I answer now? Yeah, yes. please. Well, well these the, the clinical trials that have been done so far have not taken into, into consideration that the neutralizing antibodies are mixed with, with, with antibodies that are not neutralized. Thus, the efficacy is, is altered in the current trials that, that have shown in, for plasma donations. And How long do you think this will take to implement? 
Well, it all depends if if phase one is is um, over or done with based on on the safety of of the trial. Um, so if we go straight to phase two, it might be a, a, a couple of months, probably uh, four to six months. Uh -huh. Do you see any challenge of addressing uh, the whole healthcare force? All the healthcare personals, can they be addressed with this solution? I do see that, um, I, I believe that it could also be um, implemented on COVID-19 patients as well as um, medical personnel. But obviously it can't be uh, implemented until safe, the, the, the safety and efficacy of the clinical trial shows um, proven to be safe and efficacy. Mike, you're on mute. Apologize. Yes, I was saying thank you very much for exchange. Unfortunately, the time is over. And I Since, would like- uh, This was group yeah. six, right? This was team six earlier, right? Vashari, can you answer? Yes, yes. team six, G6. six. Yep. Exactly. So now we have the pleasure to have team 018 Chateau Boy. Sorry if I don't pronounce it very well. Can you please raise your hand and Varshali will let you, will unmute the speaker. And please shift ventilator, start slowly to be ready. Do we have our speaker? Sidant, I see that he raised his hand. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, we are audible. Uh, I have a small request. Please uh, unmute Rahul Gupta also. Support network leak happens, he can continue the presentation. Rahul Gupta. So are you one or two person to present? I will present. Suppose a network glitch occurs, he can continue the presentation. Oh, Rahul Gupta. God. So can you yeah, can you hear? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear okay, you. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank Great. Thank you for oh, this. So I, uh, I will start the presentation. Yes. Whenever you're ready. Do you see our Arshna? Okay. Uh, Arshna. Yes. 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 Perfect. So be careful about the red background. Thank you. You can start. Okay. Okay. Hello to everyone. Myself Siddhant Srivastava and we are representing the team Chaturbhuj. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So the basic modes of transmission we see in uh, coronavirus is that if we see the contaminated surface, we got coronavirus. If we touch the pupil, we get coronavirus. So it can be a mode of transmission very high. The only thing is that we have to maintain social distancing. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Hello. Yeah, see that, I think. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So as we know that we have to wash our hands thoroughly, don't touch our knobs, we can't touch the lift panels, we don't have to uh, touch our uh, face also. So the biggest problem is that virus can stay on any surface for even days. So the only thing we can do is that uh, apply social distancing and avoid contact. So that's uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, uh, ma'am. I, I think uh, your network is slow and it takes time to, for you to see, but go ahead. Okay, 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 uh, okay. So the biggest problem is what we have called gloves. We can wear gloves, but the gloves is that we can easily rip off and the uh, supply is very, very less and it's creating a huge biomedical waste uh, because this, uh, it is a couple of coronavirus and people are throwing here and there. So next slide, please. Uh, hello, next slide. Uh, yeah, I changed. It's not here, sure enough. Okay, uh, huh, okay. so we have, okay, it's so distorted here. 
Uh, okay, so we have defined a problem statement here, and then we have developed a key which we are working in this from past three months, and also get patent for this in India. Uh, we have developed a small key which we can put anywhere in our pocket, and our small, very small triggering mechanism which we can do our all-purpose jeweler work. We have three patent tested also. Next slide, please. it's very difficult to uh, next slide okay so these are the novelty of our red it has a magnetic gripping it has we have used two fingers for holding this we as a wide application because index finger the middle finger the strongest part of our arm we have a hinge support we have used a uv light after modification from after uh, discussion from the mit team we have modified that we have used uv light we have used suction cup we have used uh, touch and trigger so that it can be far used for the frontline workers so next slide please So these are the major applications like from the public places we can hold the belt from the bus we can carry luggage of our item we can take money from somewhere it is because of plucking mechanism uh, we can lift heavy weight from this we can also use an ATM because there's a touch sensitive trigger here so uh, next slide please uh, next slide okay the the uh, the most biggest problem we face in opening doors so these are the basic applications uh, uh, we have used a sucking club we thought we can hold anything so next slide please uh, actually time is very less uh, didn't unfortunately yeah, the time is over so we we'll need to uh, just you can these. roll the slides uh, next yeah, or just, i will not explain yeah. much yes uh, just right, do we have, network glitch is happening just do, do we have action. yeah that, it's over so we will let time now for the questions uh, any judge that would like to ask a question, maybe a, another judge or that didn't talk. I, if you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. Arvin? Yeah, I think was this uh, idea worked out in these last two days or it was already there with you? Sir, actually, I patented this, this three months before I have 3D printed actually I'm from IT Kanpur they have printed this and also working very well but I am now need to commercialize this I have had some because after discussion from MIT team and some mentors here I have applied two more two more useful things like UV light and suction cup which can be used by the frontier workers so right now it is not in the market but we uh, and it is patented about we have the patent design uh, so we need to put in the commercialized label so that we can proceed because it is a very high utility today because ultimately 75,000 cases daily in India it's a very huge number the only thing is that we need to uh, create a gap by this yeah any additional question another judge maybe all right I think we're good. If we don't have questions, this means that it's over. And thank you very much um, for your presentation. I was very, um, you know, I like the, the product, like all the people that are presenting today. Um, next team will be shift ventilator. So please uh, raise your hand if you are part of this team. And coming up soon is virus. All right, do we have the speaker? Do we have anyone raising their hand? Mashali, do you know there is nobody raising their hand? So guys, you can go into participants. Oh, here we go. One person just raised their hand. Dr. Ananta. No, I don't think he's a part of this team. Oh yeah? yeah. Oh, I just I just unmuted him. Um, who who is can please the speaker of Shift Ventilator raise the hand? Nobody?
If nobody comes up in 20, 30 seconds, we have to jump to the next team. All right. Five, four, three, two. Okay, let's go to virus. Can the team virus please raise the hand? Chief ventilator, if you're here, please be ready to come after them. Otherwise you come at the end. Piyush, are you the speaker for virus? Yep, at your command, at your command, yes. I'm Wonderful, do, do you see Arshana? Ah, uh, I... Can you see me? Yes. Perfect, so she will, she will have a red background when you overtime. So please be respectful of this and try to wrap sure, up. Sure, sure. Up, right? Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready, right. feel free to start. Ready, right. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. Team Virus presents to you a formulation that safely kills 99% COVID viruses as certified. Next slide, please. So Sonali, Suri and Shivani are the three daughters that are worried about their parents, uh, both of them frontline doctors and both having staked their lives for the humanity and their baby brother. Next slide, please. Tehas and Vizas, the bo uh, both the frontline doctors, the parents are fighting a virus that spreads through air and are well aware of the problems that masks and PPE bring along. Uh, the problems with the bacteria and virus, they exhale, they have to inhale and all the heavy breathing. They do not have the safe alternative to toxic, toxic disinfectants and they also know they might get critically ill and have a real chance of fighting for their lives. Our association with doctors and professors tell us that almost 50 to 90% of the doctors would have already been infected and now the question is to highly reduce the antiviral load. Thank you. Next slide please. What we decided to do about this was to serve the valiant frontline community of medics and paramedics through our novel non-disinfectant based, non-alcoholic, safe, long-lasting formulation that kills 99% of the COVID viruses and that is certified tested. Amongst the numerous utilities that we could think of, uh, we could serve the frontline fighters by decreasing the antigenic load by a log scale, by bringing the spray cans or 24-hour diffusers and also the sanitizers, the sanitizers for hand wash, uh, for hands uh, through hand wash or gels as well. Next slide, please. The solution is not only very, very safe, made from the natural, uh, naturally purified molecules. It is not a it is non-alcoholic in nature that could be used on any surface or in any situation. Long lasting that it is, uh, we could bring it to India for 100 rupees a can or 15 rupees a diffuser for an entire month. As you said earlier, it is very, very safe for the health as well as for the handling because it is non-alcoholic. Uh, next slide, please. We could initiate the production of this within 15 days and uh, associated that we would love to be, we would love to collaborate with the private and government players and supply to the hospitals, homes, offices, and defense. And this could be, this could be uh, achieved flexibly via various marketing strategies that we have. And we know that our stakeholders would like us to have a market dominance. And therefore we plan to achieve it, uh, not only through the USP of the products that we have, but the simplicity of the production as well. We could proceed to serve the entire world very, very swiftly with this. Next slide, please. As we have done the technical, operational, financial, and HR feasibility studies. These are our timelines, and we are pretty certain that uh, within 15 days, we could establish uh, the production and we can market to the world and to the entire embassies. So together, let us join the hands to deploy this spray can and all other utilities that this uh, formulation could have uh, so that we could build a very, very good post-pandemic and a better world. Next slide, please. I thank the entire team, Aheli, Ikshita, Jiba, and Hassan for letting me to be the face of the team. Thank you so very much, everyone. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any queries. Thank you. Thank you very much for the pitch. Any judges would like to start and ask questions? Hey, Piyush, a uh, quick question. Uh, how did you do your uh, quality assessment of the product? You said it's 99% logarithmic scale, you have found it. Do you have that study done uh, at the 
proper lab or is just and give me a more detail about your compound. Yes. Right. Uh, so yes, we have done the studies with uh, DBT RCB Regional Center for Biotechnology Faridabad that is government authorized laboratory. So a lot of uh, cellular uh, studies have uh, been done by them as has been authorized by the ICMR. Secondly, we have the bioinformatic analysis that we had done and we have a lot of literature survey to support lot many studies to turn this uh, formulation into a drug as well for which we do not have the research as of now, but for the disinfectants, we could proceed immediately uh, because we have all the regulatory licenses and uh, uh, certifications in place. About the compounds, I would currently, uh, uh, since this is currently a trade secret and not patented, we would love to patent it uh, within uh, five, seven, 10 uh, days more. So uh, it's quite confidential as of now, I would have to apologize for that. I'm extremely sorry, but they are plant-based uh, purified chemicals that we were able to identify through our literature survey and uh, through our bioinformatic analysis uh, that we had done. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think we have maybe, um, yeah, Dr. Avi ha wants, has a question. Go ahead. It's, it's almost too good to be true. I mean, it's like magic. If it works, it'll be really great. Um, but what, sort of, what technology is it based on? And don't tell us the name of the compound, but I mean, is it nano? Is it iodine based? Is it, I mean, that's one. The two is how long does it stick on a question? on a surface right 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 uh, right uh, thank you for calling it the silver bullet uh, uh, strategically looking at it we wanted to have this uh, uh, silver bullet that's how we proceeded with this formulation your first question uh, now the stability of it uh, we have done some prediction studies that tell us that almost 200 hours it could stay on the surface that makes it almost uh, uh, seven to eight days uh, and the technology as i have earlier mentioned is the phytochemical purified phytochemicals that we have. Uh, these are not uh, nanoparticles. Uh, these are not anything else, but the phytochemicals that we were able to purify and put in a proper formulation in a non-alcoholic solvent system that works well. Thank you, Dr. Evi. Thank you very much. I think, um, unfortunately, we are over time for the Q&A, but uh, it can lead to a broader discussion. Thank you for this pitch. I wish you a lot of luck and you will have the results very soon. Thank you. Now we have, sure, pleasure. Now we have the next team and the next team is, oh, hold on, sharing my screen. Dial back system of management. Is it this team? Is the name of the team? Hopefully. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. Am I audible, Doesn't... please? Yeah, let, let, yes, we can hear you. Okay, may I start? Yes. Uh, do you see Arshana? She will be your timer. Do you see her? Uh, no, she's not can visible. Can you see right. me, sir? No. Can you see me? No, we cannot. Yeah, now we can see. Now, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So watch out. She will have a red flag when you're over. So be careful after three minutes, right? Whenever you're ready, you can start. She will launch the timer. Good luck. Hearty Radha Swami and Namaskar. The pitch is hybrid three-dimensional three, three sanitization system and contactless measurement of vital health parameters for the safety of health practitioners and patients. Next, please. We have a diverse team including a senior medical doctor, Dr. Vijay Kumar, and I would like him to introduce himself. Thank you. I am a doctor of medicine and a member of the Royal College of Physicians of London. I am the president of the local hospital where much of this work has been carried out. My colleague is also highly qualified and he is here, Dr. Gopi. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vijay. Apart from him, we have electrical and mechanical engineers, young entrepreneur and embedded systems enthusiasts. Next slide, please. For the background, India recorded more than 76,000 COVID cases yesterday. So far, about 90,000 healthcare workers got infected while on duty. Next, please. Probable causes include poor disinfection of patient areas and wards and contact-based equipment for measurement of vital health parameters. Next, please. So part of our solution is three-dimensional sanitization of patient area involving UVC lights and chemical spray. We have done experiments in our hospital on bacterial load and got very favorable results. Next, please. The second part involves design and development of low-cost contactless strap-on device 
which can measure and communicate all vital parameters of temperature, heart rate, pulse oximeter, and blood pressure. The device is centered on ESP32 microcontroller. Proof of concept has been done in the laboratory over this weekend. Next slide, please. Over this weekend, we have also developed a number of UVC light-based sanitization products for patient files, medicines, etc. The products developed are either not available in the market or are at very low cost as compared to the equivalent products in the market. Thanks to this hackathon, we are now geared up for commercial production for the benefit of underserved and rural population of India. However, all these are small measures to fight a pandemic. Next slide, please. The larger issue is the holistic measures, and the story is all the more relevant in the light of yesterday's panel discussion. These larger measures are already being taken in the Alvag, which is therefore COVID-free, while lying right in the red zone city of Bagra. The measures include sanitized atmosphere and cooperation with nature, agriculture in 1,200 acres of land and dairy with 1,100 cattle, all managed by community residents on voluntary basis. Adequate diet and fresh warm milk in right quantity is provided to all the residents to increase their immunity. Job for each person, unskilled to skilled, earn while you learn scheme for unskilled persons. Cost-effective, bold experiments are carried out for infectious diseases, healthcare reporting center for workers and visitors, and a Sahaj Yog for children from right from three years right up to adults for holistic development and in-house production of, of masks, sanitizers, etc. Next, please. Here you can see some children performing Sahaj Yog in agricultural field. Next. Very, very quick, unfortunately, or, um, you are over. Yeah, we just reached the uh, time. So unfortunately, we need to. Right, to just acknowledgement, if you can just. Uh, oh, is that? Yeah, exactly. So that's um, exactly perfect. You were finished. Wonderful. So now I would like to again ask uh, any judges to ask a question. Do we, have, do, you, do we have any judges that would like to talk? Hi, Mr. Bhagwan. I think uh, it's a wonderful presentation. Uh, can you tell me what is the major innovation in this whole work? Yeah, there are actually uh, several things. Uh, you know, we follow systems approach, and uh, which is based on the Aristotelian notion of uh, whole is more than the sum of its parts. You may find the subsystems uh, of uh, different uh, attributes here, but when these are put together, they, their overall effect and the interaction increases multifold. So one innovation here is the uh, you know, uh, the contactless device that we are developing, which has all measurements in one device. And uh, the uh, health uh, practitioners do, don't have to really touch the patient uh, for measuring that. And so, that, so it's safe for them as well as for the, for the patient. And then all this is low cost solutions. As you must have seen in the uh, presentation, we have given the costs also. Several products are not available in the market, which we have developed. And those uh, which are available in the market are much more expensive than this. Even for the contactless uh, device, the devices which are available here are very expensive and not in the reach of rural population and underserved population. And they are for uh, a single functionality, for example, either blood pressure or oximeter or something like that. So what we are uh, developing is uh, one and all device and uh, there are we have multiple uvc products which you can see here we have displayed in the video you can you can check here and all these things we have done uh, over the weekend here and uh, quite a few of these and these are all uh, targeted for hospitals uh, health, healthcare practitioners Right. Thank, thank you very much. So unfortunately, I just see the red flag of Arshana. So we just reached two minutes of Q&A. Um, so we need to, to un unfortunately, jump to the next team, but you will have feedbacks, of course, uh, later on. Right. Next team. What was is... this team? Number of, what was the number of this team that just finished? Ash Ashley, can you uh, quickly say? What is the number? 29. 29. 29. G029. 
Thank you. All right, so now we jump to the next team, Dr. Dr. Jarvis. If you can please raise your hand so we can allow you to talk. And next after them will be Team Ulinzi. Um, am I audible? Yes, you are. Do you All see right. Arshana? I don't see her. Um, is it possible for you to just let me know can when you, the time is up? Can you now see me? Yeah, I can see you now. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, if you can see her, that would be great because she will have a red background when the time is over. So be careful because you only have three minutes. Oh, sorry, I apologize. I didn't want to launch the slides. You only have three minutes, so make sure that you finish on time. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. I'm going to start now. Um, hello, everyone. We're doc team Dr. Jarvis, and our track is uh, G. Next, please. So let's talk about the problems that exist in the status quo right now. Now, the greatest problems that exist are that hospitals are at a great risk from patients, and there are also illicit use of PPEs existing in the market. Next, please. Now, um, our model actually consists of a machine and an app, and this is the prototype of the machine we have. Now, let's move on to the working of the model. Uh, next, please. Um, so this is how the model is going to work. Um, so the user is going to stand in front of such a machine and then uh, there can be two types of users, an OPD slash visitor or a medical staff. Now, if it's a OPD or visitor, then he or she can go and uh, click on OPD or visitor on the app, and then the app is going to present a barcode. The barcode is going to get scanned by the machine, and the machine is going to quickly analyze if the user has a mask or not. And based on that, a mask or a pair of gloves and touchless hand sanitization is provided to the user. Next, please. Um, now, for medical staff, the procedure is almost same, but the staff is required to register or log in. That is a that will allow attendance of the staff during the first during the first usage of the app uh, of the day, and then the uh, the medical staff is also allowed to uh, choose what uh, he or she requires. Next, please. Um, he or she can actually choose um, if he or she requires a mask, glove, or sanitizer, and again, it it gets scanned and it gets dispensed by the machine. Next, please. Um, now, this is how the entire uh, model is that there's a culmination of machine and the mobile app. The mobile app helps in authorization and the machine uh, records the ID of the staff using it and keeps an eye on people without a mask and alerts them. Now, the mobile app keeps a track of the utilities and it also helps the system to ensure a full safety within the hospital. Next, please. Now. Um, the machine helps us in five ways, uh, scanning the face, may, marking attendance, providing PPEs without any physical contact in the form of UV rays and hand sanitization and suction-based uh, glove donning system. Next, please. Uh, now, uh, for the total cost, we have estimated that uh, for a single unit, this might range from 8,000 to 15,000 rupees, but we might be able to bring it drastically down when we have bulk orders. Next, please. Uh, now, this is how we plan to implement the entire idea. First, we're going to pitch it to the target audience and get feedback from them. Now, based on that feedback, we're going to improve our working model. And then we could replicate that, that idea into a, a working model and then distribute that into our target audience. Now, let's talk about our target yeah. audience. Initially, during the stage one, next please. Initially, during the stage one, our, our target audience is going to be all the hospitals and medical dispensaries. But later on, we can also forward this to all labs performing tests and can also be used in in all other platforms such as <coughs> malls, cinema malls, etc. Next please. Now talking about sustainability of the entire model. Now this machine that we showed you is would be made up of aluminium or carbon fiber like material and which can easily have a lifespan of five to six years. Now all parts uh, such as sanitizer, mask, etc., are replaceable, thus are equipped with the latest technology. And uh, this uh, system can also be used after the pandemic because such uh, these requirements would still exist in the hospitals. Next, please. Sorry, uh, so oh, oh. yeah, this is the we last time. So um, a little background about us. We are a group of undergrad students and we are a group of three. Hope you like the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Any judges that would like to ask the first question? We have Damodar that didn't ask a lot of questions. 
So well, that was comes to like quick question. Uh, you keep saying about UV. What you're doing with the UV light? Are you here, speaker? Is he muted? Oh, you have to unmute him then. I am not sure he has control on it. So he has to raise yes, the hand again. Um, yeah, so the UV light um, can actually help uh, disinfect all your gadgets such as watches, mobiles, and etc. That are also, and that also increase the risk in hospitals such as in the wards or uh, OPD theaters. So this can be used to disinfect such uh, gadgets. So you have in the machine that UV ray camera, that's what you're doing or? Right, right. And the machine is going to have a compartment where it's going to ask you that you should place all your gadgets, um, electronic gadgets or watches, etc., into the machine. And within three minutes, that is the estimated time. The, or, or everything that you put inside is going to be disinfected with the help of UV. And then uh, the risk is going to be drastically reduced. And you said you can track people. How do you track people then? How you can trace whether people have got infections? No, um, it... the, the tracking is no. The tra uh, tracking is basically that when when a user stands in front of the machine, the machine has a camera, and the machine can actually look at the person, and uh, and machine will be able to understand if the person already has a mask or not. If the person has a mask, then the machine is not going to dispense a mask. But if the person does not have a mask, then the machine is intelligently going to assess, assess that and provide a mask to the user. So that's going to limit the wastage produced in the society and also reduce the risk in the hospital itself. Right. Tamodara has one question. Yeah. And have you tested the efficacy of the system? This is right now a prototype uh, model only. Uh, that we came up um, during these three days only, but we're pretty sure that uh, once we are able to implement this, um, we're going to reach large scale. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for the question. We are over time for the Q and A. Um, thanks again for the pitch. You will get the results very soon, and I wish you good luck for uh, hopefully to implement the ideas. All right, now next team, that will be Team U Lindsay. And next after them, Illuminators. So if you can raise your hand and be ready to talk. Hey, Michael, am I uh, audible? Yes, you are. Are you the speaker? Yes, I'm the speaker. I request you to please unmute uh, Krishna as well. Do what? Please unmute uh, Krishna. Krishna, okay, cool. Is it done, uh, Avashiri? Could you do it? Yeah, yeah, it's done. Wonderful, wonderful. So he's unmuted. Number. Team number. Team number G021. 021, right? Yes, yes. Wonderful. So team 021. Whenever you're ready. Uh, oh, yeah. Last thing. Do you see Arshina? Uh, no, I don't. Can you see me? Yes, yes. Can you able to see me now? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. So now she will have a red background when time is over. So please watch out that to be to finish on time. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Good evening, everybody. My sister, who steps out of the house every day to fight an invisible battle to protect her family and of many others, works in fear, fear of getting infected by the same virus. I decided to take it as a challenge to ensure I make her workplace safer so she does not have to worry about her life without, while saving others. Next. Currently, over 90,000 healthcare workers have been infected, according to a report by the ICN. Next. This got us into contemplating how we should sterilize common touch point surfaces so as to reduce cross contamination within COVID-19 isolation wards and ICUs. Next, please. We present to you Sterilo, a revolutionary fabric-based flexible UVC sterilizer. UV in the C spectrum has the maximum germicidal effect. Also, thanks to zinc oxide nanoparticles, Sterilo can sterilize itself. Next, please. The existing UVC autonomous robots require evacuation of the patients 
while UVC boxes cannot sterilize fixed touch points. Next, please. Sterlo solves major usability challenges compared to the existing sterilization systems as shown. It is 40 times faster, it's cheaper, and the best part is it is reusable, hence sustainable, and does not require evacuation of the room. Next, please. It is super easy to use. All you need to do is adhere the snap buttons onto any fixed surface to be sterilized, snap Sterlo into position, wait for five seconds, and it's all sterilized. Next, please. Besides, it can also effectively be used to sterilize medical instruments like pulse oximeter, stethoscope, and surgical instruments to add onto the list. Next, please. Functionally, Sterilo can be applied onto any flat, rounded, cylindrical, fixed, or even movable surfaces. Next, please. In fact, we were able to develop a quick minimum viable prototype to demonstrate its technical feasibility. Next, please. A training protocol was developed using the training of trainers model. Here's the basic overview of that. Next, please. Here's how we plan to implement Sterilo, taking a journey from the hackathon forward. We tend to get these compliances and certifications for Sterilo, which is in the next slide. Next, please. Once we get the certification, we plan to install it in local clinics and we have, uh, which have low, uh, low entry level in order to improve the product based on user feedback. Next, please. Once Sterilo gets enough validation, a beachhead would be secondary and tertiary government hospitals and then expanding to the hospitals in Pan India. Next, please. This is our business plan. Next, please. With this, we conclude our presentation and I would like to introduce you all to our team. Thank you so much and we are all eager to hear from you. Thank you very much for the presentation and the nice slides for like everyone. Any judges that would like take the lead on the question? Okay, so first thing, I think uh, I like your team. Your team is good, so you have people uh, who can do some good work. My challenge is the way your claims are way more than what it can accomplish. You know, you said it, you put in the pulse oximeter, pulse oximeter has edges and all that stuff. Even if your technology works, it won't go into the grooves of all the instruments. So I think you have to be realistic what your product can accomplish to give yourself credibility. Your product may have a role in the uh, application, but when you throw out more than what it can accomplish, you sometimes lose the game, what you plan to accomplish. So that's my feedback for you. Okay. That's, I really agree, appreciate yeah. But I would just like to point out, since it's UV rays and since the material is cloth, it's like a fiber, I'm sure we can cover it really properly and the light, the UV rays can penetrate into the grooves is what I, uh, you know, I think it should but we can definitely look into the further details of it. Thank you so much for your review. Do you have a human factor engineering people in this team or no? Yes. I see there are 10 names in there. I'm so sorry, um, can you repeat? So have you, in, have you included a human factor engineering? So I think there are people like who can uh, give you help, like whether what are the challenges you will have in the real time situation when you start using it. I think they will tell you uh, what are your challenges if you can bring this product to life. Um, yeah, okay. so right. So um, yeah, I, I will um, answer the question. So uh, sir, uh, so we have um, two product designers in the team and we are also looking at uh, doing pilots in uh, small clinics, as uh, Pranav had mentioned, like that's the whole point of it. So, uh, so that we get feedback. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, Dr. Avi, what to add a quick comment? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I like it actually. It's pretty good. Uh, the only thing is, uh, tell me one thing, is it applicable to wet surfaces? Because a lot of the uh, surfaces that doctors and nurses touch are wet. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So, um, um, so you don't know. You, you can figure explain, that out. Uh, if, right? Yeah. So, so I think that then, is something. Uh, as long as we. 
Yeah. Sorry, I think that is something yeah. that we can um, sort of explore. Uh, we haven't yeah. looked into that in detail yet. It's just a suggestion, yes. really. Okay. Good. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, was a great discussion, and we are over time already, so we have to jump to the next team. Good luck, everyone. It was great, and um, thank you. you will have the results very soon. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. All right, so now next team will be Illuminators. Illuminators is the team, and the next one will be Mooded. Zero for it. If you are here and you're unmuted, please take the, you can talk. Are you able to talk? Partially, do you know if you could unmute them? Yeah, I'm actually trying to. Okay, yes. team okay. 40 illuminators are here. Can you everybody Wonderful. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Are you All going right. to be the speaker? Yes, yes, okay. I'm yeah. joined by my team members as well, Ashok, uh, Darshana, Gopika. Hello. Rohita Srikant. Hi. Yeah. Wonderful. Do, do you see Arshana? Do I see Arshana? Let me. Can you see me? No, ma'am. Do you see her now? You can search my name in the box. Yeah. Okay, let me find you. I see the panelist. You can search for Archana, yeah. Yeah, I guess it should be there. Can't find it, or the list is so much. Can you? Yeah. Okay, so the, the, what is important is to have her as a camera because she will have a red background, but um, let's let's go ahead. You have um, three minutes time, and we will stop you if you go over. But if you can see Arshana, she has a, a red background, so you can see it yourself. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. All right, I'm ready. So we are representing Team Illuminators. We are Team Forty under Track G. We are proposing digital biomarker mask with a smart personal protective equipment. So I'm a healthcare worker in the front lines dealing with COVID since March. And the biggest uh, issue as a healthcare worker is the cross-contamination is the biggest concern. And you know, as of now, 90,000 healthcare workers have, uh, have lost their lives uh, fighting this COVID-19 in India and all over the world. Um, that being said, we are, as we said, we are proposing a digital biomarker mask which helps you to detect the, the load of the virus in the, uh, in the atmosphere, basically. Can you, uh, can you change the slide, Mike? Yeah, yeah, please say next slide, thank you. Okay, thank you. So that's the background. We lost so many health worker, healthcare workers during the fighting the COVID-19. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. So this is a simple PPE worker we are proposing for the healthcare workers. Next slide, please. If you guys can see the picture, this is made up of antiviral PVC sheets. This is a simple, uh, simple design where the hands are free. It has an umbrella cap on the top and the PVC sheets are coated with an antiviral material. So our assumptions and we kind of think that this PPE can be used for over longer time when there is scarcity of personal protective equipment in certain places. And I'll, I would say all, those, all over the country uh, this should help hospital healthcare workers in the hospital, clinics, community health workers who are going door to door, 
uh, doing a COVID testing, screening them, and that kind of stuff. Next slide, please. This is a simple uh, 3D model of the PP West we are proposing. Next slide, please. This is the smart mask we are proposing as well. It's a digital biomarker mobile app. It's connected. So when the virus load or the, let's say you're putting the mask on and you walk into a patient's room and let's say the, the, the atmosphere already has a virus. So this mask will detect it and it will lead, uh, lead to us a marker and saying whether it's a good atmosphere, moderate or contaminated. So whether healthcare working can back off, can step back and do something else, maybe a, a change in the protocol or treating a patient. So the cross, as I said, the cross-contamination is the biggest concern in the healthcare world as of now. For instance, one patient would be negative at home and when it goes to the hospital for shortness of breath, but two days they are found positive. Excuse me, the time is over. Unfortunately, okay. we have to stop. I'm good. I'm good. All right, good, perfect. Um, so let's ask the judges if they have any questions. Alvin, your yep. idea, hello. Your uh, idea is good of PP uh, kit also, and about this mask, uh, how would this alert be given to the person? How how would it function basically? Mr. Yeah, actually, can you answer this question? Yeah, yeah. this mask, actually, this mask has a, um, a sensor, a biosensor. So when yeah. uh, when the load is uh, applied onto it, like viral load is there, it, it gives you a signal. So uh, it, it, it actually gives you a marker and uh, we can identify in the particular zone, there is a aerosol. So, so just a follow-up question. Yeah. So I uh, just following on Dr. Mathur's question, I don't think uh, there is any technology right now which can detect a virus in the air. So do you any know any anything? I don't think there is anything like this. In aerosol, we cannot detect anything right now which can give you instantaneous. So, so are we, you just making... we found in the in the uh, yeah, it, it's a graphene-based uh, field effect transistor. So it it actually gives you a pulse whenever the the air has a, a viral load and there is a receptor on the uh, the sensor it detects it and then uh, it gives you the signal so you say graphene based and what will the graphene based sensor detect that's exactly what i'm asking i am not aware of any technology yeah. that's what i want to know what technology and how it differentiate from anything any protein or what it detects that's exactly what i need to know Actually, the in the uh, in the air, the particular pathogen is there. Now it has some it has a, uh, bi bi a biological structure, and uh, whatever the sensor we are going to put is going to react with this. And uh, as it is activated by the battery, which is there in the mask, it gives you the pulse. Okay. So through this, we we will be able to understand the conditions. So this is an idea which we are proposing, but it is already proved in the in the journal which I have read here. They have already proved this and it was recently tested also. So we thought this idea and help. Uh, so through this hackathon, we, we try to develop this uh, model and tell the care workers. We are now uh, almost over. Is there a last very, very quick comment? Otherwise we, we can move on. Thank you. Th thank, thank you for you your comments. Thank, thank you, you sir. very much. Thank you again for your pitch and um, again, wonderful advancements and innovation like every team and we, you will get the results very soon. All right, now I would like to introduce the team Giro, G, J040 Murdit and Med Pulse is coming afterwards. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Do you hear us? Yeah. Wonderful. Are you going to be the speaker? Uh, yeah, I would like to. Uh, I would like to request you to unmute Unmole also. Yeah. Unmole. Yeah, I'm, so unmole. I'm on unmute. I'm on unmute. 
Has, is it is he unmuted? Oh, yeah, he's unmuted. Yes. Okay, perfect. So do you see Arshana? Um no. Can you see me? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Mike. Um, am I, am I visible? Wasn't the last team 40? Sorry, Mike. Uh, wasn't the last yeah. team number 40? Last team was 40. No, Our team number? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it sorry, last. No, be, before, before, yeah. The team before. Yeah, them. before the last team was 40 as well. Oh, so there he is a mistake. This is 22. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is 22. Oh, I apologize for the mistake. Yeah. All right. All my testing you for numbers has not gone in vain now. So it's just this one that is wrong. The other one we're good. So this one yeah. is not 40, but it's um, 22. 22. You can see it here, 22. Yeah. All right. Okay. Am, I, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. And I hope you can see Arshana because she will have a yeah. red background when the time is over. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. You have three minutes. <clears throat> Okay, I'm ready. We are team Mudit and here we go. Eight months passed and we are still combating COVID-19 pandemic. Without the tireless efforts of the doctors and health workers, so many lives could not have been saved. But now the health workers themselves are in problem. Please change the slide. This is a situation where the frontline workers are the backstage heroes and are underappreciated. In India, as you can see, 82.7% of doctors feel stressed out in their profession and 46% fear violence against themselves. This is a grave issue in India where the relationship between doctors and patients is not so healthy today. Change the slide, please. Mind is the place where greatest of the battles are fought. And if our frontline workers are negative, uh, have negativity flowed in mind and their well-being is not ensured, how would we lead a great battle against COVID-19? There has been much regard, disregard to the needs of a doctor or a healthcare worker. They don't demand anything, just a calm environment to work in. And when the COVID-19 environment doesn't support it, it not only elevates their stress, but drastically impacts their productivity as well. Our aim is to bring in bits of joy and positivity in the minds of the COVID-19 warriors. So, due to overwork and burnout and not appreci no appreciation, this leads to lowered morale of the healthcare workers, leading to stress and anxiety, ultimately impacting their performance in the time of crisis. Next slide, please. So what is our solution? We propose a solution to bring down the stress amongst the healthcare workers via gratification from patients' community. Positive distraction from stress to small joys like appreciation from the patients will not only help them maintain a good mental state on duty, but also help them boost up and channelize their efforts towards this battle. This will ultimately help in nurturing good morals in the Indian health community, benefiting both the uh, fronts, the healthcare workers and the patients. The platform will remove hassles like distance and safety for the patients to appreciate. This is especially going to be helpful to uh, those health workers who do not earn a handsome wage and are worsted during situations like COVID-19. Please change the slide. Change the slide. Please. Yeah, so next slide. So let's have a sneak peek into the uh, app. Uh, yeah, so Mudit, the joy of giving. It is a platform to bring optimism and unity, uh, unify patients and healthcare workers via gratification and resource provision. Next slide, please. Where patients and doctors can be authenticated and connected with each other so that human contact, uh, connection is maintained and a community is unified. Next slide, please. Gratification can be expressed by using thank you cards or sharing their stories so that the doctor feels, uh, you know, uh, have done something. Now, how do we differentiate? Most offerings such as applications, online patient doctor community platforms, stress management resources are available in the market, but a solution building an optimistic healthcare community that ensures good morals does not exist. Next slide, please. Excuse me, you are unfortunately over time, so we need to um, stop here. And I would like now to have the questions of the judges. Uh, 
any judge that would like to come in? I think you were not able to complete your presentation. So we'll give you one chance, five seconds. Just tell us what does it do, this app of yours. Okay, so should I begin? No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Just tell us in five, ten seconds, what does it do? That's it. Okay, okay. So the, the basically this application is about uh, where uh, patients can be connected to doctors and they can share their thank you stories. They can gratify the doctors uh, anytime. This will... Uh, remove the hassles of distance and safety and ultimately you know the the positive the uh, having positivity float in mind can drastically increase their productivity by as much as 12 percent so it is a sense of giving from both sides a win-win situation which will ultimately check okay, on the okay. prevalent so unhealthy doctor, relationship okay so this is a doctor patient uh, appreciation and social platform where they connect yeah. on what they've done for okay fine yes sir Got it. Do we have another question? I see Arvin maybe, but I'm not sure. Your idea of having this relationship is all right, but so long when it comes to uh, protecting from the virus, uh, how would you think this will have an impact? So, so uh, in, in this uh, track, we are focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so sir, this uh, this was like a, from a product point of view, we introduced like a community building thing for the start. But uh, in the later phases, uh, unfortunately, Shakshi was not able to communicate that. But in the later phases, we are looking to, you know, uh, set for the remote areas in the remotest parts of the country. We do have like appreciation for uh, remote, uh, like healthcare workers, but we don't have, uh, you know, some uh, co like contributing factor to them. So with the help of this community, we can uh, definitely set up donation camps, which is our future plan, like a GoFundMe campaign, but for the healthcare, uh, from the healthcare perspective. Other thing is that, other thing is that from the PSS uh, perspective, PSS stress management perspective, we are thinking of providing resources, uh, which could help both the uh, education from the user side and from the healthcare side. That's all we'd like. Which will have customized resources. Yeah. According so, to the disorder. All right. So we had just had over two minutes Q and A session, and I hope it was valuable for clarifying about the solution. Thank you very much. It was amazing to have you with us and for your time and your innovation. Now I would like to introduce the next team that is going to be, if I'm not wrong, Medpulse. Is Matt Pulse here? Yeah. Uh, hi, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I request you to unmute Sneha Yadav, please. Uh, she'll be doing the presentation. Got it. Whenever Sneha has been unmuted, just talk. Uh, Michael, am I yeah. audible? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you could please start with the second slide as you begin. Second? So yeah. the, the next one, you mean this one? Exactly. Okay, perfect. So uh, do you see Arshana? Sorry? Do you see Arshana? Uh, no, I can't. So, no, I, I don't see anybody else. Yeah. Are you able to see me? Uh, yeah, I'm able to see it. Good to go. Yeah. Wonderful. So she will have a red background when it's over. So be careful, right? So do you have three minutes to share and after that we will need to stop you. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Okay, we can start now. Perfect. I'm a doctor and I'm about to separate from my family for months so that I can keep treating you while still trying to keep my family safe. It hurts. No hugs for my girls, no cuddles for my partner. Socially distanced now to make my sacrifice worth it, said that doctor departing. I'm not anxious that he will bring infection home, but I certainly worry about his health. If he will be stressed or depressed, I won't know, and he won't let me know, but I wish I could help, says his partner. Next. 
As you can see, 20% of healthcare workers experience moderate or severe levels of anxiety and stress. Next. We at Team MedPulse have developed a wearable sensor that non-invasively will monitor, analyze, and transmit the data about the doctor's vitals combined with the sweat cortisol levels, which would be an indicator for the stress levels. Next. What if we can help her know exactly when he feels low, needs that special boost only the little one's love can give? While we buckle up to tell the organization that a burnt out workforce cannot function efficiently enough to fight a war so long. The data generated by these intermittent stress levels would then be used by the management for proper shift rotation, managing workforce triage and thus balancing, efficiency, balancing efficiency change. This analytics generated will then be relayed to those loving hearts who will have a chance to say, we're proud of you and we understand your anxiety, but you should know you're not alone. Next. But is the market thinking of this? And indeed it does, but not specifically for the healthcare workers. Available devices use less sensitive parameters and do not differentiate negative and positive spikes of heart rate variability in EEG. Also, since they cater to individuals, not organizations, it will not be useful to adequately manage the core issue inclusive to healthcare workers. There is limited evidence cited to support the usefulness of modalities such as relaxation, music, which these devices offer in management of stress. Prevention appears to be once again far more beneficial. Change? The tentative roadmap to conceptualization and final development of our device would take around a year and the cost can be roughly estimated to be around 20 to 30,000 Indian rupees per device in the beginning. But as we scale up, the cost should definitely slide down. Change? I would like to give a great shout out to my team members for the formulation and development of such a great idea and to the mentors for guiding and supporting us. Keep caring and supporting from Team MedPulse. That's it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your presentation. You finished on time, so that was great. Now I would like to have the mentors, the judges, sorry, to ask questions. Okay. Really good concept, but uh, implementation will be challenging. Who is your Definitely. medical advisor for the sensor technology? Uh, so... So I've referred to the articles uh, regarding the burnout issues and what was and no, to actually uh, I said sensor technology. Who is the mentor? Do you the know there is a cortisol level sensor? Yes, sir. I definitely know there's a cortisol level sensor, but it's just the cortisol that they're measuring, not exactly the heart rate parameters. And uh, since you are from a medical background, it requires a lot of parameters to be integrated to actually measure the uh, stress levels. Uh, and since as doctors, we are already chronically under stress, so those devices wouldn't adequately cater to our population as such. So there is only one, uh, Berkeley has got a one program that's making sensor yeah. technology and sweat Definitely. sensor technology is really, yeah. really hard to make. And you're asking a cortisol level in this sweat. Uh, good uh, luck so with you. So you may have to rethink about it. I think you went on the right track, thinking yeah. on sweat sensors where their feasibility and technology uh, application is still under trial. I think it will take another five years before it become kind of commercially available. And so, so I don't- I'm mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, I just uh, have, uh, before the conducting this research, we actually did a literature read through and we did get a wearable device that was available in the market. So I think the mechanism is in place and they've already used electro-reduced graphene oxide immunosensors. So uh, that would already measure 0.1 to 200 nanograms of uh, cortisol. So I think that's quite an sensitive parameter that would, we would be able to measure and conceptualize this. You know, the reason is right now in the lab, still it's not possible to measure sweat cortisol level. Sensors are way far from there. So check it. It's okay. It might be there. You may have got something, but I, yeah, yeah, I've been working with sensor technology. So just work on it. Have the right team with you, with the right advisor. Okay. Definitely, sir. Thanks for your advice. Sir. Thank you very much for this interesting Q and A. We already over two minutes, but will the judge very quick add something? Otherwise, we just jump to the next team. All right. So then we jump to the next team. Thank you. So that which number was this team again? Med plus. Uh, and 82, the number? 82. 82. Yeah. 82. 82. 82. Yeah. 
082. All right, so now we have team 023, Nano Guardians. Um, uh, I would like to uh, unmute Sunita Patel as well. Okay, so she has to raise the hand and then she will be unmuted. Okay. So she was unmuted. Is she here? Yeah, she raised her hand. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I'm Shakti here representing the team Nano Guardians in the development of Nano Rash Preventer. And our problem statement is um, moving on, please. Next. So, our problem statement is doctors, people from uh, tropical regions, and those who tend to perspire a lot are affected by rashes and skin problems. So, it causes mechanical damage on skin and moisture associated skin irritations. So, next. And our objectives will be covering the development of talcum powder for reduction of damage caused by PPEs, followed by the sweat-related microbial infection, and adding on, a giving, adding on and giving a solution to the people in tropical regions who are having a controlling sweat-related disorders. Next. So our business advantage is actually we are unique in composition, and we do not have any competitors as of today. And... Uh, our first mover advantage. And moreover, we are in demand for various age groups, as well as we have tie-ups with potential customers, pharma companies, and they are ready to take up the order as well. So we are hiring business analysts and marketing personnel and having tie-ups with pharmaceutical companies to scale up the product. So next, uh, the solution for this problem is formulation of talcum powder, which will be going through biologically synthesized silver nanoparticles and zinc oxide. Uh, in addition with biologically origin-based fragrance and talc. So next, um, the targets will be uh, PPE kits using doctors uh, and those who tend to perspire a lot. And our outputs are actually sweat absorbent, they prevent itching, avoid the risk of microbial infection, and they actually reduce skin allergies. Next, uh, we approximately need uh, a time period of 10 months to go from a prototype to commercialization uh, in between the uh, product development and all. So next, uh, market perspective will be ranging from uh, 92,707 million uh, do US dollars from uh, 2018 to 2024. And these are these uh, brands that are coming up with such ideas as well. And next, so as you could see, uh, this graph clearly states that rash powder is um, uh, cost effective and moreover, it is more effective in comparison with other brands in a way that it has antifungal, antibacterial and antimicrobial activities uh, as well as antiviral, whereas the other brands comprise of only two or one of these properties. So it rises up everything and it actually clears up the problem by uh, preventing antifungal attacks for those frontline workers. So next, our implementation will be scaling from uh, rupees 100 for 100 grams, and it will be uh, sold in 10 gram sachets for normal people because they could benefit out of this, and even the underdeserved people can benefit out of this as well. Whereas we will be selling it in a much higher rate to the healthcare hospitals, and our market price is 2.5 so that our business is sustainable. And so our team will be helping up, next please, will be helping up yep, in the formulation, yep. evaluation, and transdermal application. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. You just finished maybe 10, 10 seconds above, but it was okay. Um, all right, time for question. Talk to Avi, yep. Yeah, so the concept is nice, but uh, there's no proof that this powder will work. How do you know it will prevent a rash? How do you know it will prevent fungal infection? Sure, um, has it been, test okay. has it been tested already? Um, I mean, I understand this is a cosmeceutical. It's not a pharmaceutical. But it will still need testing. Yes, sir. we understand that part. And actually, about the composition, 
we told about uh, nanoparticles being involved. No, I saw that. So, I yeah. so yeah. one minute. Uh, sir, zinc, zinc and silver nanoparticle, both are under use. Silver nanoparticle, if we see, it is present in uh, soap as well as uh, hand wash. No, I know that. So that, I know that. it but is I mean, competent. I mean, this formulation itself has to be proven to prevent fungus and, and to treat rash, right? Because basically ah, yes, what you're sir. talking is one is infection, the other is contact dermatitis. Those are the two issues you're talking about. Yes, so yes. So we need sir. to prove that they stop it and, you know, prevent it. Ah, yes, separately we are having proof, sir, for zinc oxide and silver nanoparticles no, separately. You, but in combination we have to need check, to have, sir. Yes, you definitely yeah. need to have proof for the combination because that's what you're selling, that's what you're making. Yes, yes, sir. All right, so that was one comment. We still have a bit of time. Anyone would like to have um, any questions or additional comments? Otherwise, we are good to go for the next team. Thank you very much for your talk and pitch and idea. Thank you. Pleasure. And you will get the results uh, very soon, you can really be proud of what you did. You had great innovation, like every team. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right. So next we have just hold on. Team zero zero five Adum. So you can already start to raise your hands. Team zero zero five. I do. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are you the speaker? Yeah, I'm the speaker. Could you also unmute uh, Aviva Levi? Um, she's, she'll be the backup speaker. Okay. Thank um, you. Is she here already? Has she raised her hand? Uh, I think she, she should have. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to unmute her. All right, let's um, wait a little bit. I'm here too. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, right, so um, I'll begin. Wonderful. Hi. So do you, uh, very, very good, do you see Arshana? Uh, no, I'm, I, I don't see her, sorry. Okay, so she is- Can you is... see me now? <laughs> Not as yet. Uh... Are you able to see me? Yeah, yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready, you can start. She will have a red background when it's over. You have All three right. minutes. Um, Good luck. Yes. Thank you. All right. I, I'm, I'm beginning now. Um, hi. Uh, I'm here to present a solution entitled Moksha. Next slide, please. So imagine you're a healthcare worker administering an injection to a patient. Uh, this is what it ideally should look like. Uh, next slide, please. However, in um, most cases, this is what it looks like, bringing us to our problem statement. Next slide, please. Um, in most real-time scenarios, PPE kits are worn for well over the recommended six hours at a stretch by healthcare professionals. And this leads to the following problems. They have reduced visibility because of incredible fogging of the visors. They have increased discomfort, humidity within the PPE overalls, all leading to increased fatigue. And even the N95 respirators, which are a necessity, but when used for prolonged periods of time, cause obstruction of circulation, bruising, and skin, um, skin irritations and skin issues, as can be seen in the graphic there. Next slide, please. Now, the gold standard solution for this issue is to use a PAPA, or a powered air purifying respirator. But these cost well over $1,000, and it's not the most viable solution for large-scale implementation in low- and middle-income communities in countries like India. Next slide, please. This brings us to our solution. Next slide, please. Our solution is twofold. Um, the first one is a retrofitable, it, our, our solution is a complete, it's, it's a retrofitable PPE enhancement kit, and it's twofold. The first one is an anti fog ventilation module, and the second one is a beeswax derm care tape. Next slide, please. Coming to the anti-fog ventilation module, it's a pretty simple and straightforward solution. On the left, you can see the breakup of the main purifying comp uh, um, sector. You have a HEPA filter or an HE filter, you have a blower, a, a battery or power source, an airtight seal and a pipe all encased um, in, in the case that can be seen over there. On the right you can see that the purified air blows into the PPE hooded area. Um, the pipe is supported by means of a red color uh, 
uh, headband. So the purified air blows into the PP hood area, and uh, this blows onto the you know onto the visor. So this enables defogging of the visor. It also keeps the healthcare worker well ventilated and fresh, and and removes the humidity and um, basically provides a much more comfortable environment for them to work in. And our target price for this is less than a hundred dollars. Next slide, please. Um, so the beeswax dermacare tape, it's essentially a skin-friendly polymer coating which can be stuck to the inner lining of an N95 mask or any respirator. This is a very simple solution which minimizes facial abrasion, bruisings, and chafing and promotes skin regeneration. And we're estimating it to cost with, between 5 to $6 for a, for a roll of uh, beeswax tape. Next slide, please. So what is our USB? The first thing is our solution is incredibly affordable. The second thing is it's retrofitable. We're not creating new PPE. We're creating a solution to make the current PPE more comfortable. It's easy to use, can be easily sterilized or disposed in the case of the tape, and can be easily manufactured, and that leads to ease of deployment. Next slide, please. So our plan for uh, looking ahead, we plan to file a patent, collaborate with STEM universities and incubators to form a minimum viable prototype, iterate the design in, uh, with the end users to form the min minimum viable prototype and scale it up by working with um, small scale manufacturing industries and tier one and tier two to make it more accessible. Next slide, please. And the team that made this is a team of mechanical engineers, biomedical scientists, and a medical student. All of us work together and we're, we're really excited. We're stoked to show you this um, this, this solution which, which we're, we're proud of and which we believe can make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk. Now we have time for questions. Any judge that will like to have a question? Actually, we don't need to. I mean, if the judge don't have a question, then we just move on. All right. So, uh, Amartya, yeah. you have yes, proposed sir. that you have a IP on. Uh, you're planning to file a patent for this. Uh, what is yes, the sir. prior art in what you're doing? Yes, sir. So, so the prior art is uh, the idea is clearly based on existing papers that are available. Uh, but what we're doing is for a, for a paper, you need uh, not just the purifying module. You even need the the mask which they wear. Um, our plan is not to make a paper, so we're not looking at level C PPEs. We're looking to implement this in level D PPEs purely for healthcare worker comfort. So we want to make this adaptable to any, um, you know, PPE overall with a hood that's out there. So it can just ventilate and defog. Uh, we're, we're not looking at making it a level C PPE. We just want to make the level D PPEs better, or more comfortable. All okay. right. So the the yeah, um can I ask sorry. A question? The, uh, yeah, yes, sir, sorry. Yeah. So did you say did you say it's going to cost hundred dollars? Uh less than a hundred dollars for basic manufacturing, so yeah. So hundred at manufacturing and how much will it be available for to the end user? Hundred fifty? Hundred twenty? Uh right, sir. So of and course there are a lot for of a level that's expensive for a level two or a level B uh, PPE. Because in India, you can actually get level three for 1100 rupees right now. Uh, so, uh, right, so level three PPEs as in, are you talking about backers itself? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm, my, I'm sorry, I, I hadn't seen that because the backers that I've seen were well over a thousand dollars. So that's uh, upwards of a lakh. No, not upwards of a lakh, so upwards of 70,000 rupees. Yeah, but I mean, I like your idea. Obviously, it's it's going to be more comfortable. But uh, so if I if I may, uh, if I may just say one thing, um, we want to focus a little less on the paper because this is technology that's there. But the fact that um, you know um, nobody is using, nobody is thinking of a way. I mean, we haven't seen any way to alleviate the PPE discomfort that that healthcare workers face. Like in the place that I work. Um, there was so a if you could look at if you could somehow make it reusable, it would yes. probably come. You can come down on the cost, but I'm you yeah, know, this that's is just a wild, wild idea, you know. Yes, sir, for sure. Um, that, that's that's what will come into the MVP. So when when we are um, working with them to you know create our, our prototype, our proof of concept, we're definitely going to incorporate reusability in that, sir. All right, time is over. Thank thank you so much for this uh, great you, discussion. 
great pitch, right? Every team, great advancements, and I wish you good luck for whatever is next, and we will, you know, announce the results very soon. Thank you Thanks. so much. Sure. All right, next team is uh, 009 Healthcare Solutions. Hello. Yes. Are you the speaker? Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so, do you see our timer? Our yeah, it's Ashina. now. Yes. Do you see her? Yeah. All right. So then, whenever you want, you can start. You have three minutes, and we will we will stop you if you over time. Thank you very yeah. much, and good luck. And uh, nowadays, uh, anyone is going out without mask from the uh, house? I didn't think so. Any one of you? All our answers might be no. Even next. Next. Yeah. Even the survey study said shows that most of the people uh, are taking mask as the first protection layer from the COVID-19. And this study shows most of the Asian population use mask only. Next. Yeah, but there are several problems with the mask available in the market, like uh, um, uh, with the breathing. Space. Like the uh, mask that are available in the market that goes in the pool, that leads to the suffocation to the person, that wearing it, and it leads to the headache also. And there is efficiency also. There, none of the uh, mask is 99% or 100% uh, efficient. Uh, till now, there is a 90 to 95% efficient mask, mask are there, and they are barrier for the. Uh, they are making barrier. They are not destroying the uh, virus. They are making a barrier between the uh, virus and our nostrils, and they are. And uh, there are several studies that show that they are not safe to use after eight hours. Next. Next. Yeah, but uh, with the product that we were, uh, we are proposing here, that is the unique value proposition with, for our product is the filtration efficiency is 99.9%. And the principle we are working uh, using here is the UV radiation seal. And the, in, the, in this, we are putting the lamp in the inside the mask that itself lifetime uh, of the LED uh, for the UVC is 1.5 year. And we are putting a rechargeable battery so they can be reused and the weight is very less and they are 100% risk free. And the cost is also very low. Next. Yeah, uh, here we are uh, uh, proposing for the three prototypes. Uh, one uh, that we targeting with the industrial worker, police staff, uh, government uh, daily uh, workers, security cleaning staff. The second one is the doctors and the, uh, and, the, and the workers that are working in the quarantine centers or in the contaminant zone. Third, it can be attached to the NFA. So next, next, yeah. And uh, this is a design for our mask. Uh, first mask, it contains the three layers, first, second, and third. In first, maximum of the particles, air particles that uh, are blocked. And then second, in the second one, there's a filter that block uh, rest particle that comes uh, from the first layer. And third, if there's a, uh, any particular, any virus or bacteria left, then it uh, the UV lamp, UV lamp was there, uh, will be there, that kills that bacteria. And then uh, the fresh air will go to the, our nostrils next. Next, yeah. Uh, in the this is the second one a prototype we are facing. There here we are making a, a mask connected to a box that is just a small size that is of the pocket okay size. We can tuck it anywhere in the belt, in the bag, or in the uh, pocket. And uh, with this in this box we are uh, adding the UV LED light along with the battery that uh, pump air. Uh, fresh air to the mask and these masks can be cons uh, customizable according to the graphic area according to the face next yeah these are the two prototypes we made uh, right now and please, these seems please wrap up right you, yeah. you just and, three minutes yeah 10 seconds yeah yeah uh, uh, these are in the uh, prototypes and these uh, we are fin making up a, a finished model of these one and after fin uh, getting a polished model then we can launch it next all right so unfortunately you over so the presentation is, is stopping yeah. uh, to be fair with all the others um yeah. yes uh, time for questions yeah any of the judge that would like to so martia again uh, you you're doing a wonderful job i think if you have done all this research in 36 hours that's commendable uh yeah. question 
you put in a uv light in a mask right yes sir do you know what are the side effects of uv light when you have a wearable yeah actually we are we are using here the uvc and in uvc also there is a range 200 to 280 nanometer in uvc if we are using the far uvc there are literature that shows that a far uvc that uh, wavelength is 200 to 222 uh, nanometer if we are using that that kills only the uh, bacterial and virus particle that are small in size but that cannot penetrate the human tissue and uh, there's a study available in 2018 that show that it killing the viruses with h1n1 flu but not harming the uh, human skin I mean, I mean not penetrating inside the human tissues and there is no no complication like keratitis if you put right no, in uh, with the with the far uvc if we are taking the whole uh, spectrum for the uv that is uh, 100% harmful but if we are taking the far uvc wavelength only and uh, the uh, chamber we are using it is it is 100% closed and there is no leakage but if somehow there is a leakage then uh, we have the uh, uh, things uh, we have the studies in the literature that show that it is not harmful how do you do fda clearance in case if you say you make it yeah uh, so uh, first we need to uh, check with the uh, in that uh, in the lab we have not yet checked in the lab we just made the prototype uh, so after that we will the reason i'm asking the are there any the predicates activity. for this you know if if yeah. we don't have predicates then it's really a fail task for you are there any predicates of wearable uvc in the market uh, yeah it is yeah. available with fda approval uh, yeah, with FDA approval. In the US market, there is a one mask is available, but uh, we are working on this from last uh, few months and we have the different prototype from them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, I think uh, again, it was a wonderful discussion. Uh, we have a lot of insights. We already over time for Q&A, so let's move to the next team. The next team is thank Euro you. Ele thank, Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much for, for your time and the entire weekend of hard work. Good luck. All right, Zero Eleven Sas Shastra. When you can talk, please talk. Sashastra, are you here? Do you hear me? Oh, I think we have, oh, okay, I see people that are talking, but I'm not sure if you want to talk or not. Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, Michael. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Are you the speaker uh, of you, the team? No, I am not the speaker. Mukund is speaker. So can you please unmute Mukund? Yeah, uh, yeah. He might be uh, raising hand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, am I unmute? Am I a uh, bit audible now? Yes. yes. Is it Mukund? Yeah. One of my uh, teammate, Neeti, you need to unmute her also. Could you please do that? Who? Neeti, Neeti, Neeti Jolly. Yeah, yeah. So she has to raise the hand. Uh, Neti Jolie has uh, is good. She uh, we can even hear now. All right. Wait. Do you see do you do you see Arshana? Hello. Yeah, we are able to see your screen. What, what, Hello. What, do you see do you see Arshana? Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we are able to see you. Okay, perfect. So she will have a red background when the time is over. You have three minutes. Feel free to start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Aniti, you can... you're on mute. Oh. Who is on mute? Aniti, Aniti, Jory needs to be unmuted. She's the one who's about to present, actually. Oh, Neti Jolly will present. Got it. Jolie, are, you, are you ready? I am ready. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Neeti. I'm a mask manufacturer. I've been making masks since the last uh, three months. And uh, my father 
he's been a patient of tuberculosis. He lost his hearing around 10 years ago. He'd been struggling to communicate with us in public spaces. He'd also been struggling to run daily errands like getting the groceries. And I realized that this problem is not unique to my father. This problem is across all ages and it is across gender. And uh, people are not able to communicate the same way with opaque face coverings. Uh, now, even in the healthcare sector, there has been a lot of anxiety amongst doctors and patients because doctors come co entirely covered in PPE kits and uh, patients are entirely covered. So the level of comfort that they can provide to each other, which they could uh, with facial expressions is not there. There is another problem uh, which we need to address, which is the high level of garbage which disposable masks uh, produce, and it's actually 6.5 million tons. So, addressing all of these issues, we've come up with a mask. It's called All Smiles, and uh, the smile mask. Uh, has a translucent screen, so it allows you to communicate and see someone's facial expressions. Uh, there are many other advantages to the mask. It's 4% uh, more efficient in filtration uh, with the respect to conventional N95 masks. And then uh, it is cheaper as well as uh, in comparison to N95 masks. It's 80% cheaper. The material is FDA approved, it has anti-fogging properties, the material is biodegradable and eco-friendly, it enables uh, lip reading, and uh, we have also made a prototype without the technology previously and uh, sold it. So we are perfectly confident and cap uh, capable of producing this mask with the uh, advanced technology which would be the cellulose nanofilter and uh, I believe that it will be resolving a multitude of problems uh, as well as adding on because uh, it allows you to communicate, it reduces the level of anxiety, it is biodegradable so it is eco-friendly, helps the environment and it is also cheaper, it's also sustainable. So this is our team. Oh. <laughs> That's all. Got it. Are you finished with the presentation? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay, wonderful. Wonderful, thank you. So I wasn't sure when I had to change slides, so I hope it, it was okay. It's um, fine. Good. Time for question. Okay. The estimated I'll cost... Start. Oh. What's the estimated okay. cost? Damodar. Go ahead, Damodar. What's the estimated cost? Uh, I believe the estimated cost would be somewhere between, uh, if, if you're doing large scale uh, production, uh, hopefully it should uh, stick to 40 to 50 rupees. Uh, hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can I ask hello. a question now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have the yeah. question quickly of uh, Dr. Ravi. So, and then you, Mukund, you can talk. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the cost of uh, maybe, yeah. No, no. It's okay. Carry on with the cost issue. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, we have done a bit of research on that. Uh, me and my teammate um, have an expertise on this. So. Uh, we estimate a cost of around 30 rupees because uh, the, the the cellulose material that we are using is basically uh, pro, uh, basically, sure. okay. basically so it's cheap now let's another the... let's address another question uh, uh, we understand it's cheap now uh, Neeti, hmm. this has not been developed in the last 36 hours you said you've already tested the technology right in your no i'm not test uh, 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 let me correct myself we've not tested the technology we have a sample and a prototype uh, which is that I have made a transparent mask, but it hasn't been using this particular technology. I have used different material. In fact, I'm retailing it and I've sold it as well. And this so technology I've, I've, with the cellulose filter has already been used elsewhere? 
Uh, no, uh, can I, uh, not that I am okay. aware of this. Okay. Uh, can I add okay. to this? Okay. So there are literature available. Uh, so where mm-hmm. uh, these transparent masks are being uh, made, and uh, for antimicrobial purposes, they are being used. Uh, but they are not using with this hydrogel technology for the defogging purposes. So this would be the novelty of the uh, of the product that we will be developing. And what's the material yeah. around it? I mean, also, uh, so it's it's also a cellulose uh, textile. Uh, no, that's that's uh, that's for a representation purpose. So what right. we are planning is to uh, make a cellulose textile uh, with the agriculture waste uh, that we'll be procuring, and we will be making cell- like extracting cellulose from there. So that cellulose will be used in everywhere, like for the hydrogel preparation, for the nanofiber preparation, and the textile fabric- uh, fabrication also. So it's it would be entirely biodegradable and biocompatible also. Why would it not be fully translucent or transparent? we can uh, do that sir but uh, i uh, but it could, it would uh, re- reduce the strength of the material sir like uh, the if we just make it with a nanofiber it would be like uh, not that much strong the, okay. uh, then so uh, you need uh, a stringy material to hold it there right to hold to hold there so we, to we add can it, add a nose spin we can add a nose uh, we can add a nose spin i make yeah. mask so i you know i uh, if you want to hold it we can okay. just add a nose spin it would resolve the problem right all right all right, we over time for this Q and A, and we still have a lot of teams to do. So let's move to the next one. Thank you very much for your hard work, and it looks thank to have you. been a great teamwork. So good luck, thank and uh, you thank will have you, your results very soon. Thank you. Sure. Next team is Team Zero Sixty Five. Yuva Senti. Zization system. So please raise your hand. Yes, you sir. My... Yep. Yes. Am I audible to call? Yes, you are audible. Are you the speaker? Yes, uh, yes, yes. I'm speaker. I may request uh, Sri Karan Patel to unmute if possible due to any network issue. He will he may be connected. Sure. So if he raised his hand, he should be able to be unmuted. I think, is Karen with you? Yes. And, and Dr. Martin. Ananta? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So they, they are unmuted. So it should be fine. So whenever you're ready, feel free to start. You have three minutes. Okay. Should I start? Yes. So let us uh, here uh, thank you all, all the MIT Akathon team and uh, here is a project on UV treatment of water pipes at hospitals. So next slide. As you know, uh, this is our team member. Next slide. So now <clears throat> the problem statement is that uh, as you know that uh, despite of our home isolations, those uh, hospital people uh, those are serving us. Uh, uh, they, can, they they are uh, always in contact with the patients. So in this case, the patients are using those toilets, and in this case, diarrhea or all sorts of diseases are infecting. In fact, nowadays COVID-19 is a great issue for us. So in that time, doctors or the uh, that uh, people may be infected within this. So hence, uh, it is a major concern within us. The next slide. So as you know that there are several uh, that, that uh, problems and uh, case studies being reported from Hong Kong, China, and uh, all uh, such uh, uh, countries. They are telling that by plumbing pipes, uh, this uh, virus, this uh, endangerous virus can be propagated and we have to take care of it. Next slide. So and this problem can be solved by uh, sanitizing uh, those pipes by chemical based or by, uh, by uh, uh, giving high energetic radiations. So as you know that uh, chemical based already being adopted. So we have to treat those pipes by UV radiations. So basically installation of the, those pipes will protect the healthcare persons from infection of the coronavirus. Next slide please. So now the potential, it will prevent the, uh, uh, that uh, uh, spreading of a coronavirus and it will, uh, the waste management can be properly carried out and uh, the healthcare buildings can be properly isolated and inlet pipe will provide safe water supply. So depending upon our strong or uh, moderate uh, uh, infections, we may use EVA, EVB or EVC in this. Next slide. So this is the proposed model where in the pipe we have uh, given uh, the UV uh, lamps 
other with the epox resins and this is the model where the total system will be uh, incorporated in the pipes and uh, uh, we will totally uh, have a what persons will not the some persons and will install it and that it is uh, integrated with the electronic circuits where it will be uh, connected to the wireless connecting device by which this will give the signals next slide and these are some uh, uh, potential diagrams by autocad so we have already did it and the, and the, we have maintained some uh, inclinations a slope so that it will can should not block the virus next slide then uh, the, we have uh, uh, connected to the graphics user interface and uh, the videos are available uh, we have already did it within, within a day two and by pressing all the buttons by day button it will go to mode a and by night button it will go to mode c and by pressing uh, we can vary intensity numbers and by which wavelength can be measured and working and uh, the set mechanisms can be monitored next slide all right sir unfortunately you just reached three minutes and uh, we have to stop to be fair with all the teams all right do you judge have questions thank you sir Sure, thank you. Yes, so, Dr. Avi. Yeah, two questions. One on uh, efficacy, the other is on implementation. Um, we all know that UV has been used to uh, sterilize AC uh, ducts, right, from COVID. That has yes. already been done. Yes. Now, is there, uh, are you planning some studies to see what's the load in the sewage from a hospital of COVID virus and how effective this is going to be? How much you're going to have to space out your lamps, how much power they have to emit, how long they will last? I mean, that's the implementation. Yes, you know? yes sir. We have already calibrated and how are you going the... to How are you going to put it in into the pipes? That the model already we have given, and the, the very smallest size UV lamps will be installed. The system itself has to be uh, installed in a pipe. The very small uh, UV lamps with a small photo detector that itself has to be installed, and the uh, rest of the things will be outside of the pipe. I'm not clear. How do you how do you know that if the if the what if the if the sewage contains X amount of virus particles per mill, how do you know the UV light that will be effective to kill them? Those we okay, have sir. calibrated so, depending upon the extent of virus strain, we we will go to either very high strength UV with the wavelength variations, very lowest wavelength correspond to highest energy, so that it will kill the virus. So the wavelength can be monitored, can be uh, varied. That uh, we have the power meter and the spectrometer, and during the installation, it can be taken care of. Karan, do you want to say sir, a the, word? The, sir, the yeah. mechanism that we developed during uh, in this mechanism, the yes, admin sir. can uh, adjust the intensity of the machines, right? So uh, as you can see in a GUI, we are just providing the three modes A, B, and C. The A means is the intensity is the most higher at the place because whenever the hospital get the more rust in the toilets and at the like a uh, day hours, day hours, so uh, the device can set in a A mode. And in a night hour, uh, it can be set in a C uh, C mode. Oh, and so for uh, for that for that concern, we are using the photo receptor. So uh, we get the actually idea that how the actually energy is delivered to the uh, pipe or the fluid. Yeah. We want to design both these uh, so systems as to... well as the oh. graphics, the app development. We we have to wrap up. Unfortunately, we should move on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. So uh, we just reached the two minutes. So to be fair with everyone, we have to move on for the next team. Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank it was you. a great weekend yeah, thank of you innovation. So Obviously, thanks. Bye. See you soon. All right. So how many teams do we have left? Um, so next team is Team 001, J Innovation. Hello. Yep. We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, please unmute my teammate Sarthok Chatterjee also. Wonderful. Are you the speaker? Yeah, I am the speaker. But if I unfortunately disconnected, he can also speak. Okay. Great. So whenever uh, do you see Arash now? 
no till not now can you see me yeah 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 okay wonderful so our rush now will Arashna will have a red flag when a uh, red okay. background when when you finish, right? So okay. three minutes, so please be careful with that. Okay. Uh, if you're the speaker, whenever you're ready, please start. Yeah. So we are team Gino Besan and me, Shongho De, my teammate Sharthok Chatterjee and Soikot Pal. And we are developing on Corona protective gloves and other PPEs to protect our medical professionals. Next slide. So the main problem statements are on this current situation, COVID-19 affected patients count will be growing exponentially. Our medical resources are reducing day to day and doctors and medical professionals are highly affected with COVID-19 because they are directly connected with patients. The crisis of shortage of doctors and medical staffs in this critical situation is the most crucial scenario. So this is very important to protect the doctors and medical staff for our society. Apart from that, coronavirus is very contaminated disease, very easily spread through touching. Considering these aspects, we design a gloves and other PPEs that are very helpful to protect doctors and medical staffs for coronavirus without harming our limited resources. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. The solution part. Yeah, yeah. So as per WHO, Alcohol is, is a chemical which will able to destroy novel coronavirus by breaking their outer lipid coat. Basis of this concept, the present innovation is introduced with a special type of self disinfectant, multi reusable gloves, and other PPEs that are the capable to eat its contact surface by spreading alcohol in every 20 minutes. The time interval also be variable. The alcohol comes automatically from the embedded container and spread on the contact surface through the pipeline and disinfect the gloves and other PPEs. The innovative self disinfectant module attachment also effective to disinfect frequently touchable places like door knob, ATM key bags, etc. We can see that our prototype that is made in within last two days on the left, lights right side on the solution part. Look on the pink gloves. Our next slide, please. Yeah, yeah, this is the YouTube video link. We can, anyone can see that. Next slide. Yeah, by using our concept, we can easily make the PPE kit. That is on the left side on the slide. We can see that. And the right slide, I it is the advanced product of our, this Corona protective glass with wrist pattern alcohol container design. So throughout the world, huge number of human beings is affected with novel coronavirus and almost all countries are affected. So this is the timing to introduce this corona protective gloves in the market, which will be very much effective to fight against COVID-19 and it can make a huge value as a particular advanced device. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much for the presentation that was on time. Now let's ask the judge for questions. Please. Any judges with questions? Again, so, uh, we don't need, yep. Uh, you guys have done like a good brainstorming of bringing something which is simple and feasible kind of uh, product. The problem with the PPE, especially gloves is uh, user comfort. You know, when you put it on, it has to be a very, people use- Yes, sir, actually. Product. So when you have alcohol dripping in, you are operating in a patient or you are doing any yes. procedure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, we, we are using integrated pipeline system on the PP and gloves also. And the dipping is, we use the specially designed pump with some check valves that, that the alcohol cannot drip or leak. Okay. So you are saying it's, a, it's comfortable to put on, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Then the human factor, like, use uh, comfort level. Can they be sir, sterilized? Actually, sir. Yeah. Please again, sir. Are the are these going to be sterilizable gloves that surgeons can wear to operate? 
yes sir it is sterilizable actually we are using special nitrile gloves here that is more resistant to alcohol and mm -hmm. the alcohol comes automatically on the contact surface by some time interval and eat the contact surface of the glass and disinfect the glass and if the doctors or medical staff holding something like injection the injection is also uh, disinfect by the glass touching by the glass mm -hmm. all right one more comment yeah yes sir, successfully we developed the prototype of the gloves only and working on the ppes in last two days, we develop a successfully the gloves. The video is at us on the video slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank Anka. You. Okay, we just reached the two minutes. So thank you very much for your hard work. Seem to have been also a great teamwork. So good luck and, and, and congrats for that. Now thank I would you. like to move. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Sure. See you soon, uh, later. So now I would what like to go to. This? The... What team was this? The one just. Team Genovation. Team Genovation. Team 001, Team Genovation. 001. 001. All right. So now let's move to the next team. And the next team is Cognitive Workload Estimation. Uh, hi, Mike. Can you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. That's Are you the speaker? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm the speaker. Kindly mute, uh, unmute uh, Manigan Abalaji if I have a uh, network issue. If I have. Don't unmute her now if I have. No problem. Has she raised her hand or him? Uh, him, Manigan Abalaji. Yeah, sure. No problem. Are. Yeah, I okay. mean. Can I go you, ahead? You, you just need to raise your hand. I don't see another person that is with you right now. Who is the person you are looking for? Uh, okay, Mani Kanda. Right? I've unmuted him. Perfect. Okay, no issues. Let, let me go ahead. Yes, no problem. So um, you can start whenever you're ready. Do you see uh, Arashna? Um, Arshana? Sorry. No, no. Well, Arshana? Yeah. Yeah, I can see Ashwana. Okay, wonderful. So she will have a red background when it's Sorry. over. So be careful. Yeah, sure. I can understand. Yeah, sure. So sure. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Yeah. Yes, I'm ready. You can. Go ahead. Uh, good. Good morning and good evening, Chunanda. Uh, this is a uh, this is a team, uh, cognitive workload estimator for medical practitioners. Kindly bear with me. I could I, I could uh, decode your brain for some more minutes. Next slide, please. The vision of the uh, complete work is about monitoring the mental health strength, mental uh, health status, uh, and it is very essential. Uh, we also been developing a screening tool for mental fatigue evaluation for all sorts of healthcare workers, and also we are promoting a skill assessment program. Next slide, please. The problem statement that we are uh, projected for MIT in their challenge is about cognitive overload make the medical practitioners geo paradise to make something harm, which may lead to misdiagnosis and misinterpretation of the medical services that you have been routinely giving us. Next slide, please. Mike, can you please? Oh, okay. Uh, we are proposing a solution that is being like. Uh, the ways of the instantaneous uh, mental status and also the work environment uh, may change the mental status which has also been observed via a mathematical model that we have developed what is the benefit over this model we have less time to achieve the results we have easy way to collect the data doing an, uh, using a neuro eeg cap we are we are providing comfort we are being easily implementable we are we can able to scalable the product to multiple cognitive assessment based programs uh, we can have a GUI. Uh, can, Mike, can you please change the slide? 
this is the complete GUI model that we have developed. We, uh, we have been decoding the brain signals uh, and then we filtering the signal and we are able to get alpha, beta and theta and delta waves. In that alpha bait, we have large number of cognitive activity associated with it. Since uh, we have so many features, we, uh, we are able to extract it from the alpha band. We are extracting some of the features like a peak alpha frequency, peak alpha band power like that. So the neural activity can be able to be decoded via uh, machine learning algorithm. The, uh, the culmination of machine learning algorithm can be used and we can able to uh, deteriorate the mental health status. Uh, how the data has been collected? We are given, uh, we have been uh, uh, taking the medical doctors for around 20, uh, 20 minutes. We are, uh, we are using eight channel EEGs and we have been giving uh, some, some amount of rest and some amount of mathematical activity and some amount of rest. Once the mathematical activity is handled by the medical practitioner, we are able to tell the practitioner that they are high that they are uh, highly overloaded or lowly overloaded. If they are highly overloaded, we are uh, projecting them to a uh, separate amount of rest uh, from doing the COVID patient exposure. Uh, and also if they are lowly overloaded, they will be given some amount of uh, physical uh, cognitive assessment training to carry over the work further. Uh, Mike, can you, uh, can you take next slide, please? Uh, what is the targeted market we have been looking for? Uh, in 2016, it was about 1.98 billion, but now due to the cognitive mental health has been globally um, alarming one, it might raise to 8.06 billion. And we have the targeted audience of about cognitive security solutions, agencies, vendors, consulting firms, software agencies, and IT solutions as well. Uh, All right, we, are, we, have, we, we have to wrap up. Unfortunately, you reached the three minutes. So now we. Okay, can you please uh, go to the reference slide? Uh, not, I'm not speaking. Can yeah, you please go no, to the it's, reference slide? Yeah, it, unfortunately, we have to stop to be fair with the other teams that couldn't finish the presentation. Uh, now it's time for questions. Okay, okay. Sure, sure. Uh, Judges, any questions? Yeah. How do you see a public health implication of your work? Uh, I couldn't get you, so can you come again once again? How would you see implication in public health? projects or in public health, how would this help? Uh, uh, this would be like uh, if they're getting the mental the cognitive status of the medical uh, medical workers, uh, if they are stress free, they can uh, able to provide a better quality of life to the patients. That is how the implication has been. We have been, we have been taking the data of uh, medical practitioners. All right, another question. Otherwise, we just move on. Three, two, one. All right. Thank you very much, team, for your work and for your preparation and pitch. Uh, we will get the results very soon, and and hopefully you enjoy the process. Next team will be team zero zero two Ayuda. Ayuda, are you here? Zero, zero, 002, Ayuda, I don't see any hand raised. Are you ready to talk? I see someone that's unmuted, Mani Kanda. Are you, are you part of the team? No. All right, no hand raised. I will have to move to the next team. All right, let's move to the next team. You can still come later if you're here. Okay. Unfortunately, I know it's Peter, actually. Abhishek just said yes, me. So he might be he might be on that team. Who? Abhishek Yadav. Okay, let's try to unmute him. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. We, it's not very, very loud, but it can, we can hear you. Uh, okay, sir. sir um, can you unmute Peter, sir? Peter Clark. Peter, yes. Hello, Peter, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm not able to... See. Yeah, I don't see him neither. Second I don't see him either. 
and he ha he's having the presentation. Okay, but if he's not here, unfortunately, um, either you are doing it or we do the next another team right now. Um, do you want? Do you? He only have the presentation. I don't have. No, we we have the presentation, but. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, What's his full name? Maybe he's maybe he's logged in as someone else. His full name is Peter Clark. Clark, yeah. P L A R C K E. He just messaged me that he is checking in on Team Ayuda. Um, I don't know if he is trying to log in or not. So let let him wait for the next. Uh, uh, you know, let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, you can still come later. Uh, no worries. Let's do the team Mask Liberators. Uh, and please, can you try to contact him so he can join the call? Thank you. Okay, sir. I'll, sir after this, okay, okay, we can do this. We can. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, sir. Definitely. Just, I'll, I'll should, thank you. Okay, thank you sir. Mask Liberator. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. We can hear you, but very not that loud. Yeah, am I loud now? Yes, better. Yeah. Are you the speaker? Yes, I am the speaker. Could you unmute Chelsea? She is my teammate. Okay. Uh, she is the I plan B. <laughs> got it. Did she raise her hand? Yeah. Wonderful. So I think she is here. Perfect. Yes. So do you see Arshana? Uh, yeah, I'm ready now. Do you, do you see her, Arshana? Uh, no, see I can't see her. No, yeah. Uh, no, I can't see her. Still Can not? Can you see me now? No. Okay. Um, yeah, no, doesn't matter. So basically, she will have a red, um, you know, background whenever you reach three minutes. So if you reach three minutes, we will ha have to stop you, right? So whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Yeah, I'm ready now. Uh, so uh, I would be presenting uh, you AeroShield, which is a reusable and reliable form of uh, personal protective equipment for the head and neck. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I won't be delving too much into the problems with the face mask. Uh, most of the earlier uh, people have covered it in detail, but I would be narrating a small story. It's my personal story. The thing is, uh, I wanted to intubate a patient uh, who is uh, known to be COVID positive, but uh, I couldn't see it clearly from my PPE. So I had to remove my goggles to put the tube in. And uh, unfortunately, I got infected. So here, what I want to highlight is all these problems are very real and uh, all these problems are causing a lot of non-compliance and hence comfort is very important in uh, doing the face mask uh, or uh, we should be having a PAPR. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but uh, uh, coming to PAPR, again, they have these environmental problems because the hoods are disposable. Uh, it requires a lot of maintenance and it is a high cost uh, thing. And basically it is designed more for the industries rather than uh, for the healthcare workers. We are just using it as a, uh, since no other option is there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I have come up with a solution, uh, though it is uh, still rough because we have got only two days to work on it. So it is like uh, whatever uh, thing we are using is a barrier against the virus. So and uh, the filter needs not be super efficient. We just need around 95 to 90 percent, uh, 97 percent of uh, filtering efficiency as the viral load comes down. As you know, why healthcare workers are more affected or there is around 10 to 15 percent mortality in doctors. That's because <coughs> uh, they are getting exposed to higher viral loads. So decreasing the viral load should be our thing. And at the same time, it should be more comfortable and uh, it should be uh, uh, more easy to use. So basically going into this, <coughs> that collar around, the air will be blown through the collar and uh, it will uh, form of like a, uh, what is it, air curtain around the head. So it would be a double layered air curtain around one centimeter apart so that the inner curtain, even if it is breached during negative pressure, the outer curtain still remains. 
So uh, this concept is based on uh, laminar flow and uh, air curtains that we use in theaters. So these things uh, do work. And uh, there is uh, one more uh, small uh, attachment in the front that blows air over the mouth and nose slightly. That's a very low flow around one to two liters per minute just to prevent the rebreathing. Next slide, please. <coughs> Next slide, please. So the, this uh, slide is uh, the 3D depiction of the same. As you could see the blower as well as the tube and connector as well as uh, uh, the uh, collar around and the cap on the top. It is also needed because it needs to seal the upper part. Yeah, next slide please. <coughs> so next slide please. So market is uh, quite there. Uh, uh, next slide please. I'm sorry, Dr. Shyam, uh, the breach yeah. time limit. Exactly, so, the time is over, unfortunately, so we can so have to to be yeah. fair with everyone. Yeah, yeah, no issue. Sure. Do uh, judges have a question? No questions? If there is no questions, that can be the case as well. Then we will move to the next team. Michael, is that uh, is that the last team in the deck? No, because uh, we are trying to get, I think, uh, one more team that couldn't present before. Yep, so there's two, right? There's Shift Ventilator um, and then Ayuda, right? Yeah. So let's go to Shift Ventilator uh, next, which is Team G033. Yes. So that was like at the beginning, right? Yep, mm -hmm. that was the fourth. Okay, so. Hello. Is that Chief Ventilator? Yes. Are you Chief? Okay, wonderful. Are you the speaker? Can you please, yes, can you please unmute my co speaker, Geetesh? Geetish, okay. They will try to unmute him. Okay. But uh, do you, okay. Do we have him unmuted? No, right? Yeah, he has been unmuted. He's muted? Perfect. Okay, awesome. So now whenever you're ready, please feel free to start. Okay. Michael, we can't see the slides. Oh, oh, apologize. I, I, I was almost sure I shared it. I'm losing my uh, habits. <laughs> That's the end. All right, perfect. So whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Okay. So hello, people. My name is Sabia, and I'll be representing our group Shift Ventilator Team Geo 33. So talking about the current situation, the coronavirus pandemic has spread to 198 countries with 24.8 uh, million confirmed cases. Now talking specifically about the frontline workers, they face a substantially higher risk of infection and death due to excessive exposure to COVID-19 and which leads to mental stress and depression, insomnia as they come in high risk group. So talking Amazing. about uh, the numbers, talking about the numbers Amazing. in India only, 9,000 in India only 9,000 people healthcare workers were infected and were reported positive to coronavirus out of which 98 of them died due to coronavirus and uh, uh, the and uh, died due to this so the problem statement we are considering is that uh, as healthcare workers have to visit patients ward frequently to keep track of patients vital signs next slide please so they are exposing themselves every time to COVID-19 and with all those uncomfortable PPE kits they have to wear all day long. That often leads to cutaneous manifestations. Next slide, please. So our idea is to have a ventilator machine with wireless network capability, which can be operated and monitored by healthcare workers from their personal cabins. Uh, so what will happen? The vital information of the patient will be uh, sent uh, will be sent to the uh, cloud database and will also be displayed uh, to the registered cell of the healthcare worker. Next slide, please. 
and uh, the data that will be sent to the healthcare worker will be end to end encrypted so there won't be any issue with uh, data leakage or other privacy concerns uh, the doctor can actually take care of more than one patients uh, through combined monitoring and uh, there are obviously various advantages of this ventilator machine next slide please uh the first one will be that all the history of the patient will be transmitted to the registered cell of the healthcare worker which leads to minima there will be distance where distance will be maintained so there will be lesser chances of infection and the second thing will be that we are seeing nowadays is that the patient's family is not informed on time so there there is delay in informing the patient's family so we can also avoid that by using this app next slide please so uh, and the third thing is that it is a very cost effective technology so we can use it in our private and government uh, covid centers and hospitals and uh, uh, in this app there is an uh, if there is any kind of emergency or uh, any other reason so the app will send an alert message to the registered cell and they can uh, come at time and actually help the patient so that will also help the patient so i would like to end it by saying that we have to help our healthcare workers so we need to take care of them and uh, otherwise we're going to face another covid crisis that will be the shortage of uh, nurses and doctors thank you thank you very much to you were a bit over time and but um, I, i'm happy you could finish perfect so let's time for a question hey sabia you got something uh, useful and it's doable provided the other uh, manufacturers of ventilator are willing to share their technology with you and trying to integrate your app is that right yes so yes is there that's correct i have two questions number one are there existing technology are you aware of those ventilator companies themselves making something like this similar technology and they can just integrate your app or number two are you talking to any of the ventilator manufacturers at okay. at present uh, uh, there are uh, manufacturers in uh, who are actually trying to uh, make ventilators which can uh, send data through networks but in india in our local area i have been, i am not able to see uh, even the basic ventilators so what uh, our concept is to make this ventilator really really accessible to local hospitals which cannot afford that 10 lakh rupees wala ventilator so uh, the concept is to develop the whole uh, ventilator locally using local materials and local uh, talent right now there are almost 20 ventilators that i know that are coming in close to 10000 rupees uh, whether it's in the us or india there are a lot of people doing r and d on this you got some unique concept and i'm pretty sure there are other people are also working on something similar uh you can channel your energy i'm just giving a suggestion you can channel your energy to make something unique or focus on everything so you have limited resources you have limited manpower who can bring uh, stuff to the plate because there is a lot of testing uh, limitations uh, when it comes to ventilator and uh, if you can just focus on what you are doing having a wifi enabled cloud based uh, control okay. system i think if you can make it and make it fast and make it usable and connect to the manufacturers like top 5 manufacturers if you have something like that i think you have a value otherwise yeah the time is gone it's it time is money in this situation thank you very much for the exchange was very valuable and uh, i think uh, you, i hope that you have an idea also to to keep the idea going forward no time for the last uh, team um of today so i'm very excited that uh, we are almost presenting all the innovators of the weekend and the team is called i'm just trying to find the pitch deck again i guess j innovation was it this one no uh, team ayuda should be the one ayuda ayuda per, per, yeah Shima Yuda please I know it's Peter Hello sure. it's uh, yeah. Peter here and um, Perfect. um yeah. I'm uh, going to try to uh, screen share No 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 I'm going to screen share for you Oh perfect thank you So we are sharing it uh, for you let me screen share for you 
Hello, sir. It's... Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Thank you, sir. Do you guys Thank see you, my sir? screen? Oh, okay. <laughs> you have the wrong pitch deck, but that's okay. Um, yeah, you could. Yep, no problem. So whenever you're ready, you can uh, you can start. You have three minutes, not four, right? Three minutes. Three, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, whenever this is loading, you just taking a bit of time right now. Yeah, it's just um, getting the uh, Zoom to uh, screen share. No, no. So I I am screen sharing for you. Oh, so all you, right. So do you so see? How it? do I sh how do I show you? Um... So you have to uh, you have to tell me next, and I change the slide. I got it. All right. So, got it. So whenever you're ready. Yep, I'm ready. Ready. Yes. Right. My name is uh, Peter Clark, and um, it's a great privilege uh, to be here. We um, we uh, at Team Ayuda uh, create um, avatars, and the use um, is as digital um, doctors and nurses in parentheses, because um, they can be force multipliers. So um, let me just um, give you an example of one, and you'll see the product right away. I think you have to play, um, if that's all right to Mikel, you have to hit the uh, play button on the woman who's um, standing in front of the pharmacist. I don't see a play button, unfortunately. Uh, if, uh, maybe um, if you put the arrow down. I'm trying. Don't see anything here. No, it doesn't work really. So let's move forward. Don't waste time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. Um, uh, I think we hit play or not. Oh, so I doubt any of the videos carry through. <laughs> okay. That's great. No, so that's not, doesn't look like, okay, I don't think this is working, the, the play on the video. Actually, sir, this, this, is, the, this is a hologram. Um, yeah. It is not, no. So this is a hologram. Oh, you uh, spoiled the surprise. So um, uh, this um, is a video of somebody. So it, there is movement. And he's um, actually an entrepreneur from uh, Melbourne, Australia. And that um, brightly colored flat is mine, which is in London. And he is pitching me on an idea. He's actually very passionate. But you'll notice he's wearing a turtleneck sweater. That's because it's winter in Australia. And he's in Melbourne. Um, and um, we're having an interactive conversation because, of course, he's a real person. And I said, well, what if you were a doctor? And he said, well, we could have 20 of us. Uh, I can imagine someone in um, Calcutta because we have a team member who's a doctor I'm wanting to um, leverage himself about 50 times. Um, it can be done by a computer imitating him, training him over six weeks. And then the, uh, the uh, multiplying factor is about 14. Or um, he can actually be himself in avatar form, but broadcasting. Why this is so unique, um, we don't know, but it is um, uh, just a zeitgeist. It's the right thing at the right time. I mean, does it solve a problem? Yeah, of course. If, um, if I had uh, coronavirus and he's in Australia, I don't think he'd have a problem. And we, we do know it's highly contagious. So our, our view on, on healthcare workers is that um, we have to, you know, we, we've talked so much with them um, doctors in particular, and it's not easy for them to be giving lost rights to patients who can't be visited. Hello, hello Peter, sir. Hello, Peter, sir. So, so the, we, the um, we problem... We have to wrap up like 10 more seconds because you right. reached three minutes. Yeah. Okay. We have partners. We're going to do so, another 30 so basic, days. So basically, we want to uh, centralize the things with the, with the help of a hologram so that a doctor sitting at a Ames hospital can control the entire, all the hospitals uh, across the India, just by uh, video conferencing is very good, but a hologram technique uh, seems a very, very fruitful, a much more expressive. That's why we have used that, that technology. Uh, uh, meanwhile, he, the Peter sir wants to say this only, and we have some products as well that Peter, Peter sir will show you. 
Peterson? Yeah, I think what we should do is, is um, uh, just have you, if you want, we've got a, a number set up, a toll-free number in India, so you can converse. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make make okay, sense, right? okay, okay, it's so the time for questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're really over time now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any judges? Yeah, Alvin. Uh, John, it looks. What, what is the team number? Uh, G two, I think. Yeah. Zero zero two. Team number is zero zero two. Okay. Now, yes. uh, you have been mentioning about uh, uh, digital communication amongst the doctors, isn't it? Yes. yes, it yes. Would be, yeah. Uh, so it's federated learning that is being pioneered amongst many researchers and collaborators, starting with King's. King's College in London, and you know, doctors um, depends on the uh, the specialty. I mean, neurologists in particular, they they're dealing with you know very difficult cases, so they need information on treatment right away, thickening of the in, blood. In, sim so in simple words, uh, we, um, like we will remove the physical contact with the help of a hologram. A virtual doctor will take the um, take the initial steps if required. We will uh, we will appoint the uh, physical doctor. Yes. So can I just ask uh, your team? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Tell us tell us clear advantages of the avatars, the holograms over actual video conferencing. I mean, you can also awesome. record a video. And, you can record a video and, and spread it around the world, right? Uh, yeah, but you uh, yeah, it's um it's uh, usually a uh, one way conversation. So if you're dealing with an avatar or a hologram, it's conversation. So it's, so it's just like if we have recorded our video and send it to you, we, mm -hmm. we can't have the two-way communication that we are having right now. Right. Sure, sure. But, but what, yes. what you're saying is that it'll be, it'll be like you, you're talking to Siri or some or an XR. Or yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's yes, a yes. Siri, a three-dimensional Siri, but extremely sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Sophisticated Siri, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. yeah very high-end with, with a personage. What would right. it take to implement this in the remotest corners of India? Now, um, that's an excellent question because we, we stumbled across success, bluntly. Uh, what happened is that um, we had a, a avatar in uh, Ghana and we sent um, down a, you know, a, a mock-up and the native language there is Iwa. And when it was loaded up into the avatar, everybody thought it was very funny. So, actually, so it so kind of went we viral. So, so we've learned we you've got to have the avatars in thing. native languages something comic right. or different or unique. All right, so we need to finish the Q&A session. It just yeah. needs can a good I, form. Yeah, let's so go viral. Last, last 10 seconds, can I speak? Last 10 seconds. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so in all, so on all one, so actually we made the team uh, after 24 hours later. I joined them later. Uh, so, uh, and I'm from computer science department and he's an economist. So. Um, blending the combination is very difficult for us in less in one uh, 24 hours. So that's why the little confusion. Um, uh, we have to presentation, and uh, so we can develop that uh, uh, hologram technique. Is um, not not very easily, but with the help of your little guidance, we can. And so I, just from, meant, I just yes, access. If I'm sitting in a remote corner, I just have to have a 4G connection, and that's it. Yeah, so definitely. Okay. Yeah, um, we're looking at actually um, uh, less bandwidth, specifically low Earth orbit satellite, because originally this was designed for remote areas, refugees, things like that. So, so places like Delhi don't necessarily have 4G. So actually, like so India, so actually so India is doubling very fast, and the geo is covering entire India. Under okay. Pelicon. Yeah, so thank you so much. And I know this hologram stuff is the futuristic thing and I know it can be it can be a long conversation. So we have to wrap up and I would like to thank absolutely everyone. And thank very you. quick, can you please all turn your camera on? We're just going to do a few screenshots so you can have memories from this event. <laughs> <laughs> so please, all participants, um, you know, turn your camera on. That I will do... Camera on, can never that up. Camera Sorry. on, exactly. By the way, uh, can we just say hip, hip, hooray for the sponsors here? Come on. Yeah, let's do let's You guys would hooray, hooray, you know? <laughs> sure. All right, so everyone, camera on. We have 55 people that are still on. Camera's on. Three, two, one, MIT India, whatever. Three, two, one, MIT India. Hey, here we go. Next one, I have three pictures to do. Three, 
two, one. Okay, one more. So where is, I'm not able to see myself actually. <laughs> we can and see you just fine. One more, three, two, one. Here we go. Now it's good. I have everyone and I would like to thank you. We are really, really, really over time and we have to go. <laughs> uh, I was going to send you the, the link for the final uh, presentation. And now I'm going to go to the judge deliberation with them to decide who is the winner. There will be four winners. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Thank Cheers. Thank you, you Bob. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. To all participants. Yeah. You all had Thanks. excellent idea. Well done. Thank you so much, Thanks. sir. Thank you. It's been a lovely part of being the competition competitor. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir.